Colleagues Bowls and the Championships Halifax a traditionally fierce derby rivals and we can expect plenty of fire in the belly from these players and especially the many fans around this ground it really is a wonderful atmosphere here at uh, the Shea the pitch there in absolutely perfect condition a credit to any groundsman young and old it's seven years since we last had a serious league match between uh, these uh, two sides so plenty at uh, at stake plenty of pace on the wings in Paul White and Rod Burr Warrensy 27 tries between them this season and a very very experienced pack prop Jim Gannon passed a late fitness test and he will skipper the side Ball's latest signing from Halifax, Shad Royston at fullback, scored 30 tries for Halifax last season. He'll be looking for one or two this afternoon. And seasoned campaigner in the Bulls Park in Lynch, Lestrange and Sibby, but look out for a very promising Cumbrian youngster, 19 years old, James Donald, at loose forward. The emphasis on the interchange benches, definitely in the forwards, but in Pankovic, Halifax have an experienced playmaker. And the uh, referee, Phil uh, Bentham, all uh, wired up, as we can see there, and strapped with that uh, tape on his right ear, looking to, no doubt, hear from his touch judges, James Child and uh, Peter Brook, or the video referee, even Ben Taylor. And I must say, uh, Jonathan, I think the last time, uh, well, I actually commentated on you, you were at the Ready? Thrub right, Hall uh, ground. You needed a, a what? Pick and shovel to get up there, yeah, didn't you? This, uh, this surface on this pitch is absolutely magnificent. Perfect conditions to play. You know, let's hope it's going to be a, an exciting game. Both sides lacking confidence, as uh, Jamie and Brian have mentioned. They both leaked an average of third, over 30 points per game. So you'd think a good solid defence, a good kicking game. It's a little bit short, you know, the, the 40 to, uh, to 20 meter areas. And I, would, short. I would think uh, Halifax fancying their chances against a very uh, sort of uh, injury troubled Bradford. Yes, as Jamie said, you know, oh, Arson. <laughs> well, well that's a high tackle already. I said there was fire in their bellies, and uh, I think the flames have got hit. It's up a little too much, though. Oof. Yeah. Well, Sam Barlow, the reckless. Well, that's a okay. ridiculous okay. tackle to start the match. Okay. I mean, in, you can be fired up, but uh, that's taking things a little too far. Yeah, well, in. I don't know what. He'd be lucky not to have a yellow card, yeah? Mm. Peter Brook, yeah, the touch judge yeah, there with start. the uh, right, right uh, get flag. Get, get to grips with it from there. Okay. Yeah, that, that did. I thought that was a yellow card because it's early in the game. First tackle, I think the referee Phil Bentham. I, I think I think that's sensible yeah, referee and all. Get yeah, to we don't want to spoil the game, but no, he's got to have a word and say, look, let's just cut this out, keep it clean. So, Bradford then in uh, possession. Move. Bradford in that uh, all uh, white strip Go. and the hands black off him, uh, piping. I'll move hands off. Moving it well across the pitch here. Good tackle. Good tackle there, Paul White coming in from the uh, wing. Come round him. Ian Sibbett, a lot of experience Move. in Super Hold. League with Salford, Warrington, even Melbourne. Platt. You can see them lining up, you know, the, the, the full-time pros and the semi-pros, Move. the different stature, Four. different Go. size of the players. Herbert. Five. The ball's Move. testing this uh, Halifax uh, pack out down the centre on the fifth uh, tackle. Herbert again, good kick. Oh, it's swirling. Taken well, though. Very well Rob, taken. Uh, Warren Cedar. Never, no fluster, was there? No, took it very, very well. It's yeah, very blustery. Up, you know, I saw them practicing before the game. Graham, A few high balls were put down with the blustery the conditions. It's a perfect kick, though. Perfect kick. Stay on. Halifax, the winners of the ben, championship Jamie. last season, but uh, been struggling for form Go this year. Move! Hold! Go! Not the best of kicks either. No, under pressure straight Two. away. Move! Bradford Stay looking back. for an early try just to uh, get the 
confidence of the uh, the championship side moving out well to the uh, right hand side well they created the overlap there should have gone three another young Move. man uh, playing with the uh, Patterson in uh, last year's grand final the Four. championship of course Move. three Seven. meters now from this uh, Halifax line Herbert distributing good tackling Five. good defense Move. last Five. tackle in this sequence running it good ball beautifully picked up no he's knocked it on Turn well did well, he catch it on ben. did he I, catch it on the knock on please uh, on the bounce there wow. on the half volley he's he's looking for the try jonathan but to my mind uh, i think the lad himself thought he'd knocked on oh i'm not sure yeah, about well, that. did he bounce up i'm he's... not sure uh, one thing all the halifax players stopped well, everybody yeah, stopped. Yeah, knock on. Knock on. Touched his fingers, then took it up. Yeah. But you can't stop, think, though. The Halifax no. players just stopped. I, I think... I think... Uh, I think Michael Platt himself realised it was a knock-on straight away, and he hesitated, didn't he? This is a one. Yeah, just touches his fingers, then goes to the ground and picks it up in one motion, but the players are lined up. This will be a knock-on, last tackle, defensive... Play the ball. <laughs> so it'll be uh, a handover. Let's see what the big screen has to say. Ben, uh, Ben Thaler, no try. Handover. Well, I think it had already been handed over. Oh, that's so yeah, Ben Thaler, a good look at it, right? But it was a good, uh, good movement on the. Uh, Bradford's part to yeah. run the ball on the last tackle. I think the worry for Matt Cole and the high best coaches, a couple of dummy runners have gone through, they've shut the defence in, and there's been numbers out wide. And they'll oh, get You can't afford to do that against the Super League side. No, you've got to finish your sets off here. They've been under pressure, a good kick, then a poor kick by Holroy, under pressure again. Bradford coming forward here with Lestrange. Held. Numbers on the right again, right? Yeah. That's where they're going to. Oh, he's going in. Has he got it down there? Chad Royston, I think it is. Good try. All the pressure there from uh, Bradford and Chad uh, Royston signed the season from uh, Halifax. We said he'd be looking for a try against them, and he's got one. There's the mistake. You know, looking to play a little bit too much football. Yes. Maybe he shouldn't have put it through the hands and take it away from the Bradford forwards, but you know, that's just too easy. They brought it on themselves. Too many mistakes, and they've been punished by Troy. Chad Royston. And uh, whilst the Bradford Bulls are lining up, I just noticed Chev were Walker uh, leaving the uh, the field with what looked like a, a leg problem. Bateman, the substitute, coming on while all this going on. While Patrick Arvan, the former junior Kiwis captain, another signing from Bradford this season, lines up the kick. Good 80% kicking rate, maintains it. Two points there from Arvan. So, Bradford in the lead early on, 6 0. Yeah, possession on territory, heavily in favour of Bradford, but do, mainly down to the mistake straight from the kickoff. You know, the high tackle, field position by Bradford, then a poor dropper by Holroyd, and then a knock on. So a catalogue of errors putting themselves under pressure, Halifax. In, in a sense, Johnson. Um, Jonathan, any part-time side coming out of the championship, they've got to play in the Super League team's half, haven't they? They'll not, they'll not keep out 12, 15, 16 tackles. No, and they've got to complete their set three, and that's the first and get good kicking game. One, move! There's that Back uh, Go. interchange, John uh, Bateman, only 17 years of age. Bradford move. really are feeling some uh, youngsters here. Bateman, uh, 17, they have... Uh, Adam O'Fryer on the bench, another 17 year old. With all the injuries, that's you know when they have the opportunity and can they take that opportunity? But it's a big ask to be playing in the forwards at 17 years of age. Right. Four, move! Hold, hold! Although, hold. I'm, although I'm pretty sure Lee Crooks uh, was performing at that age, wasn't he? Good kick. And a uh, quick word uh, perhaps Damien can put us in the picture down the, the side. 
Yeah, Chef Walker has got a problem with his left ankle. He's got ice on the injury at the moment. He's due some good fortune on the injury front. Had wretched luck in the past. Uh, he's in a lot of pain down there. Kick then by uh, Bradford. Not a 40 20, so right Halifax in. is uh, right right heading right ball uh, here. Wait, wait, wait. Number 28. Uh, Graham uh, Holroyd came out of uh, retirement in uh, February. Ouch. Prolific point scorer in the past with this uh, Halifax Move. side. They need a set now, Halifax, and just get complete the set. They got a good kick, have some field position. Well, they just need to hold the ball for a period, don't yeah. they? Well, it looks to me that they're not Move. relishing the forward confrontation. They put the ball through Go. the hands. They just need to get yardage now. You've got to roll your sleeves up Three. and take it up. Move. I think a lot Holds. of work here from uh, Jim Gannon Holds. and Bob Webb Bezik, who have experience of uh, Four. Super League play. Well, as you can see, they're struggling to make Holds. any yardage. Go straight up, Craig. Come on. Halifax Move. driving down the middle, but Bradford coming up very, very quickly. The line speed, very, very good. And that's not good. They're no, going to be, you know, no. defending again near the halfway line. Move. Royston, Move. number 25. Two. This uh, pitch ideal oh. for uh, running, of course. Uh, Halifax Town Football Club play Three. on here in the grass Move. cut, very, very short. Oh, it's, it's in absolutely magnificent condition. Four. Move. Wait, wait, go. Not square. Oh! <laughs> Jim Gannon, yeah. Jim Gannon reading the game. Now then, what can uh, Halifax do? Warren C goes in, but again, you just look at Heath the Strange is like dominant in this game, running from acting half back, bringing the forwards into it. Wait, hold, well, ha go. Halifax were trying little chip kicks over the top in practice, and oh, there's another knock on. Oh, and, oh, is he? Oh, first one, please. I said there were two knock-ons, though. Well, I just think, again, they're just trying to play too much football. It's a lovely ball by Holroyd, but you've got to take those passes. There's the second mm, knock-on. Yeah. Very, very lucky to get away with it. Well, he's, uh, he's judging that uh, Bradford knocked on as well. Elliot Whitehead. I was just about to say, Halifax were practising a lot of chip kicks early on before kickoff. You know, and I would have thought that was a little tactic because this Chad Royston, I saw him last week against Warrington and he lies very, very flat. Good tackle. Good tackle from Ben Blackdown. Still, oh, Warrancy going for the interception. That's a try. Number 19 there, Gareth Rayner. Former Leeds and uh, Hull wing star. A hint of a forward pass in there, Jonathan? Yeah, a hint of a forward pass, but again, it's the mistake. Another try from the mistake. I'm not sure what um, the full back was doing here, but he was defending behind the try line. Just watch this again, the short side, they've got numbers. That's a forward pass, isn't it? But then, I'm not sure what the full-back is doing there, actually. He's defend. Just watch number one. He's got attack. They've got the numbers. It's a lovely ball. Slightly forward. But just watch number one. I'm not sure what he's doing there. He's got attack, the defender. Well, he was caught in two minds, wasn't he? He didn't know whether to go out for the wingman or stay inside for the, for the pass inside. Well, if you're defending behind the trailer, you're not yeah. going to do anything, Ray. Look at him. Well, Rayner is the type of powerful wingman who, who will go himself, won't he? Yeah, but it's just everything has come from mistakes. You stick it up your jumper, get a good finish your set, get a bit of field position, and then put a little bit of pressure on them. They've, the only ones they put pressure on is themselves through the mistakes. Most of the mistakes have been made in their own half, and they've been penalised for it. Conceded two early tries. Big change of personnel over at Oxel for Bradford. This was a new man from the New Zealand Warriors. Oh, it's going to go. Now then, did that go in? I'm not sure. The wind, the wind, uh, did, did the wind just it in? Keep the, it away? Yeah, I don't think it. Uh, 
but it's not given anyway. So let's have, have a look. look at that. Oh, oh just now, good call. Good call. Well, on our pitch, it looks as if it was in, didn't it? Good uh, judgment there from James Child and uh, Peter Brook. The, oh, what uh, a great take that is. The Hold. Hold. Fantastic take there. I think it was Kyle Briggs again. Andy Lynch. And there's a knock on now then. This an opportunity. What, yeah, and this is what they want to do, right? This is where they want to, uh, you know, create the pressure. Let's see if they, what they can do now with the first field position. Lynch takes it in. Again, lovely offload. But the knock on. Disappointed. Heads in. Great yeah, rivals in the past, as we saw in our introduction there with the Wembley appearances between these two. What? Halifax Move. renowned for their pack. This is where they need it here this afternoon. Great two. forwards, Move. Jack Wilkinson, Back Henderson, Trey, Roberts, on, Dixon, Harrison, you name them, they've had them. They need a good pack performance here today. They need to keep the ball down here. This is Three. better. Move. Ten metres now from the, the ball's in. line. Hold. Goal. Attack was gone. Oh. Bezik attacked in half-back. No, then Nine. they're directing everything, all right. I'm sure he'll get in and put a little kick no. in or something. Ben Black. Here he comes. Here he is. Good little spin. A chance. Oh, go himself. Has he got it down? No. The referee is on the spot. No. Oh, he delayed, didn't he? Definitely held him up there. Yeah. An Miles. injury for Platt created the space. Miles Greenwood nearly in there. Well, has that been knocked on? Whose ball is it? Zero. The referee Move. looking for help from the referee, Mr. Child. Yeah, they have got uh, communication. And then There's up. a drop ball. That's a knock on, isn't it? I thought it was a forward pass. Well, we're playing on. This is going in. Oh, and that's in touch. Well, I think well, Bradford, that's... no, Bradford pulls have caught the Halifax bug. That's... Throw the ball anywhere, loosen it up a little bit. This is the, the attempted try. Magnificent tackle held up. I think it was Mark Herbert. Definitely didn't score. Lost, lost the composure, lost the ball, and then Bradford Bowles trying to open out a little bit, out. throws the ball into touch. So another opportunity for Halifax. Well, Not penalty. Up. Yeah. Let's have no excuses. That was a piece of shambolic rugby. <laughs> okay. Okay. No question. The two coaches must be going spur down there on those benches. Halifax here now. Then pressing. They need to maintain the pressure. Two, Sam Barlow driving oh. in 10 meters from that line. Go. Good ball, Black. Nice ball. Yeah, good run, good Move. angle. Stephen, Stephen Bannister, Bannister. Yeah. waiting. He was oh. looking in the right position, coming at the right angle. Bezik again. Here's a chance. He's in. Oh, Jim Gavin, who was a big doubt before kickoff. Well, the question a, of, has he grounded it? Well, reaction of the player usually gives it away. Great angle by Gannon. Captain's run, good finish. Just watch, he's got a stretch. He's going to be short. Great try, that is. You play that at normal speed. You've got to play at normal speed. That is a try. Let's have a look. Hang on. Is he short? He stretches, stretches, on, stretches, get stretches. Out. Get that arm out. That's try do. on the That's line. Try. The hand is there. Great try. Just what Halifax wanted. And it just shows that right, that's where they need to be. Just hold on the ball, get a good kick and chase. Force the error. Try. And they kept it in the forwards. They kept it short. They played down the middle, up and at uh, Bradford. Because Bradford's uh, defence this season hasn't been all that good. They've conceded 32 points per match in Super League. Yeah, 32 points. And also, you know, confidence is low. They're not confident in defence. But if you're, if you're making mistakes and you're playing on the halfway line, you don't have to worry about your defence. In that area, conversion goes over. That's what they have to do. And the expected two points from uh, Graham uh, Holroyd. So they hit back with this. Great angle. Takes it. Takes the line on. Takes it flat. Now, do you know, looking at that, did Bradford's arm get underneath that? Too late. Too late. Too late. Too late. Too late. Oh, yes. I'm not bothered. 
Halifax again then in uh, possession in the uh, famous uh, blue and Hold. white no Hold. longer the old-fashioned uh, blue and white hoops but uh, nonetheless the same uh, colored back strip up, up. and uh, go, Damien go, go, down go, go, there any news uh, yes, some injury news. Michael Platt has uh, got an ankle problem, rather like uh, Chev Walker. The physio's keeping an eye on him. We'll see how he goes. That's good play. Bradford not straight at the uh, the play of the ball. And a bit of lip as well. Hold that skull. One. Move. Halifax then now Goal. coming more and more the into ground. this game, just coming up to the 15-minute mark. Ten Two. points to six Move. for Bradford. Hold. Well, with Platt's Goal. injury, no, Aldroyd is hopefully going to spot this and attack down uh, Platt's, Good running. Platt's channel ring. If he's caught an ankle... I like, uh, I like what the, this man, Hold. number 13, Bob Bezik's Goal. doing around the play of the ball. He's 30 in the play now. Good ball. <laughs> Forward pass. Well... Paul White, I'm not sure, overrun it, you've got to hang back and time your run. Just watch, as the full-back comes into the line, okay, balls here. he's actually standing Three. in front of the player. Step together, you know, he's got to Ready. hold your run, you know there's a run around happening, just hold your run. Onside. Just little right. mistakes, you know, little simple, Out. simple mistakes, right? Both sides are making them though, aren't yeah, they? They are, they, they are. Whoa. Move. And uh, can we uh, have a word from uh, Robbie, Robbie Hunter Paul down there? Well, well, Ray, the energy of this game Two. was completely swung Move. in the opposite direction from why it Hold. started. The Hold. It was all Bulls Hold. in the first five minutes, and Halifax have just got themselves back into the game with that try. The Bulls have to be very careful because this Halifax team can play some good rugby. And if they get a sniff of this game, they'll play for the full 80 minutes. One. Move. Hold. Kick then from uh, Bradford, not exactly uh, troubling uh, the home side. I think, you know, Move. it's uh, definitely the wait, yard wait, between the 40 go. and the 20 is uh, is short. It's, I think they measure 16 yards, so 40 20 Three. is definitely Move. on here. Hold! Bezik again. Four! To Gannon, these two experienced go. men in the middle calling the shots. Good running again here from. Uh, Stephen Bannister. And what's happening, Ray? You know, they're keeping possession, trying to keep lead the set, forcing, you know, penalties and, um, and mistakes from, from Bradford Bulls. That's where he first got hold of him. OK, Graham. I'm just wondering about the temperature. 28 degrees Celsius, centigrade uh, down there, Jonathan. Now, yeah. Watch um, Halifax have quite a lot of old players in, 33, 34 years of age. You know, how will that do? Well, you'd expect, you know, the last 10 minutes of each half maybe it'll be affected. You know, you've got to use your interchange, rotate your players. Graham Holroy. We needed some support there. Desperate defence here for Red Rand. Here's again. Bob Bezik again going to the right, slipping yeah. the inside pass. Here he is again, Bezik. Now that, that was a knock on. That should be. Oh, it's. Well, did, did Bradford not. Well, did Bradford not knock that ball down? Here they are, are they? They're moving it out. Oh, the good tackle. tackle Warren C. Had to come in. Terrific tackle from Warren C. Had to be made to overlap. Well, that was knocked out of his hand by Bradford player, wasn't well, it? Well, there's a couple of knock ons. Leaving Bob hands off. A couple of knock-ons there. Referee missed it. Pushing the rock. But again, pushing in the rock, a silly penalty. Okay. He'll get field position now, and then have to defend. So little things. Well. First match in seven years between these two teams. Of any note in the cup or the Wait. league. So a lot of a lot at stake here in this uh, locality of Yorkshire. Bradford then been on the rack for 10 minutes, coming back here now. Another test Hold. now for the Halifax defence. Move! Watch uh, a strange. He'd be dictating play. Good passing. Platt, nothing wrong with him there. He's in. Well, I think the way he ran uh, for that try, Michael Platt, I think would put the. Uh, Physiotherapist mind at ease. Nothing wrong with his running. 
And again, that's where the weakness is, you know, in the Halifax defence on the fringes. Just watch. They run the dummy run. There we are. There's the dummy run. All right. Misses a tackle. He drifts out too early. That's his man there. He's got to make a tackle. And Bradford are attacking this right hand side all the time. They are. You know, I played against uh, Graham Holroyd. He's a very, very good footballer. But that's a tackle, you know, he's got to make. He just runs inside shoulder. That's a very simple try. Patrick uh, Van lining up there while the uh, players have a drink. No such drink for the Halifax players, just recriminations all around uh, Ben Black laying the law down. And I'm sure that uh, the Bradford Bulls coaching staff have looked, you know, I've really noticed a couple of dummy runners going through. Defenders are drawn in and they're huge gaps. And uh, no problem with the uh, the kick this time. Patrick uh, Arvan adding another two points. And again, changes being made. Three, three substitutes in. Allrod going off. Gannon going off as well. Yeah. McCarley, Fenkovic and Jones coming on. And I think this is a problem. In this heat for Halifax, they're going to have to use up all these interchanges, Jonathan, yes, because there are a lot of ageing players in, in this championship side. One, move! Back up, back up! 16-6 then for Halifax at the end of the first quarter of this uh, Carnegie Challenge Cup. Uh, Right, good tackle. Azua. And Hargreaves, good ball. Andy Lynch, drag. Oh, he's lost it. Good run by Lynch, but he lost the ball. Oh! Well, he did well to get away with that. To he did. Chapel Bird. Cop check. But all credit to Paul White, he carried on running. And the back then, 3 and 16 6, but back here now. Oh, good running, can he get away? Yes, he can. Rob Warrensey coming in midfield. Good quick play of the ball. Halifax pressing here now. Warrensey again. He's got to give it. He's given. Uh, not square, Kyle. Not square. Kyle Briggs, not square. Had to play the ball. Involved. The two. Markers at the play of the ball for Bradford, not one behind the other. Oh, Cherry yeah. Hole. Move. Yeah, off he goes, Cherry Hole. Two metres now from this uh, Bradford line. Oh, good try! And straight away, Sean Penkovic, the club uh, captain. I tell you what, he's been instrumental uh, since he's coming on, uh, Ray. Couple no of half breaks. What's sharper? The 76th try in 180 games for Halifax, a renowned try scorer and a great playmaker. He is, he looked very sharp, but that all came from a, a Bradford run. Just watch the markers. It's poor communication from the markers. Well, he's, ju he's just penalised the two markers, hasn't he? The, uh, the previous uh, player of the ball. Well, no communication, not sure what Chad Royston was doing. And again, like yesterday, why do you want uh, two markers there? Oh, I think I'd have two markers there, you know. Anyway, we'll not argue. <laughs> Danny Jones. Two points from uh, Danny Jones. Next. Academy oh. player. Yeah, he's been sharp. He's been sharp. And suddenly, the Halifax section come to life. Just watching you know, from there, they go early. You know, they, they may, the, the gap opens up for Penkovic and he just takes it. Back in it again. In, in that uh, sense, though, the, the, the two markers should remain firm, one on either side. Yeah, and communicate. Not, not shoot forward. No, no communication. One, two, stand square. Yeah. Francis uh, Cummings, the uh, Move. 
Bradford assistant oh. coach coming on and I think really uh, laying into them and telling them a few things. Yeah, definitely, you know, like lack of concentration. I think oh, both coaches oh. are all the same, you know, but like, oh, good hit. Popovich, I think it was. Oh. Knock on. Makali Aizui, the uh, former Papua New Guinea World Cup player, dropping yeah. the ball. Great enthusiast. Makali, been around a long time, 33 That's years it. of age now, but a, a great uh, campaigner. I think he copped a big hit there, he just lost he it as he went down. It won't hurt these Papua New Guinea lads, they are tough, you know yeah, that. Tough, yeah. You played against a few. Move. I tell you, you know, both coaches, you know, they're great in attack, but defensive, defensive lapses, Two. you know, has made it a very exciting game. Well, we've had 28 points in uh, 24 minutes. It keeps like this, and we're in for a bonanza. Three, move, line. Go on, three. Bradford now on the attack. Lynch pushing his out here now. Four. Move. In uh, Civit. Go four. Oh. Five. That's and the move. last tackle. Go. Herbert kicks it a corner. Warrens is underneath it. Play on, play on. He's got it. Oh. Superbly taken. And good running out. Move. This the lad. Uh, Rob Warren C. No, it's a good call. Was he in the field of, in the end goal right? Very difficult to see it. Well, he took it well, whatever he did. He did. Doesn't matter. No. He's got it going. Good tackle oh, there again. Prolific try scorer, Rob uh, Warren C. Average is almost one a game, Jonathan. That's Go some going. Could do with one year. That's good play, good that. Kick. It's an early kick. They're under pressure. That's better. And there's a good chase here coming down. Uh, He's on his own though. Number six, Danny Jones. He's tackled him. And uh, Damien's got some further news for us down there on the benches. Yes, Chev Walker will play no further part this Move. afternoon. The uh, thinking is that he may well have broken a metatarsal. That's a bone in his foot famously broken by the likes of uh, Wayne Rooney and David Beckham in the past. Wretched news for the former Leeds and uh, Hulkingston Rovers centre. He's had all sorts of injury problems. Move. He's out of the game this afternoon. Well... Even with such company, I don't think uh, Chef Walker will be delighted with a broken uh, metatarsal. Bradford, oh, that was a clearing forward pass for the anti back. There's another one. The Halifax crowd eventually have a cheer <laughs> after they think possibly a dozen forward passes yeah. not seen by the referee. There's flattery and there's forward. Okay, fellas. Well, get in. that's forward. That was a forward. That's okay. And that's and that forward. one is. The American football. But the the, the touch judges, you know, have these walkie-talkie yes. uh, things, and they've got all contraptions in their ears, and yet, you know, we don't see this liaison, do we? As we should Out. do. I think Halifax need to play the ball a bit quicker. You know, they, qu they play the ball aren't quick enough, and they, you know, the, the defensive line of Bradford boys well, are set. That's where they find it difficult getting out of their own half. I think I think you find, uh, Jonathan, that in the championship it is a slow play of the ball. Yeah, very much so. It's much more like a, the old-fashioned game. Of but you know, you're playing against a Super League side. You know, you have to play the ball quicker. Yes. They look at them controlling the tackle here now. Defensive line is set. Over, mm -hmm. running. A little bit of a Dominance. risky pass there from number 17, Frank oh, uh, Watini. Ben Black, well taken. That's it, get up, a good chase. And again, just putting the pressure here on uh, Chad Royston. He's got to come running out now then. Not a bad chase here from uh, Halifax. They've got to keep him down oh. here. They do, that's Move. good play. Slow the play, the ball that's down, that's better. Hold. Defensive line set. Avan. Came to... Uh, also a little bit too unheralded in this wing man, but he's certainly uh, become a favourite with the uh, the Bradford fans. They do like the big, uh, big wingers of Bradford, wing. don't they? Remember Leslie Viney Colo? Very well. Four, move, go. Again, and the edge the, on the edges Five. of the defensive move. line is gaps appearing. Go. That's where the Bradford boys have got to attack. There we are. That's Look good. at that. Oh. Bad pass. Oh, good dummy. Oh, and another dummy. Has he got him? 
No, he hasn't. Yes, he's in. He's in, that's a try. Elliot Whitehead showing a good turn of pace there for the second row and really some uh, weak defence out wide. Well, it's just, you know, the poor pass, the bouncy ball. Just watch. They go to kick, they rush up. There's the overlap, a poor pass. They still look. got it. One dummy, two dummies. It's a, it's a lovely try, but you've got to ask questions of the defence. And don't forget, that's the second row, putting dummies out like exactly. that. Exactly. And the, then finishing off. But look at the overlap, though. One dummy, two dummy. You've got to take him. Someone's got to take him. It's a very good finish by Whitehead. Yep. But the space is, as I've mentioned, they're getting caught on the fringes all the time. All credit, though, to that uh, young man, a Bradford uh, local. And not the easiest of kicks for this man, Patrick Arvan. it well but not with the right direction so Bradford have to be content with 20 points to 12 just watch again on the last play one dummy two dummies Warrensy takes it your own, lads. Ben Black takes it you know up at Ben and, and I think White said he was confident in his own speed wasn't he well you know it's one difficult, another forward pass. Oh, move! Go. Two, move! Hold, hold, hold. Bradford reasserting themselves around that. Uh, three. Yeah, Adam O'Brien is there. Adam O'Brien at half back oh. as well yeah. now. Play yeah. the ball. Another uh, young lad, just 17 uh, years of age. In fact, he's a, a local Halifax lad. Hold Bradford. Bradford giving the opportunity to many youngsters at the moment because of a very serious uh, no. injury uh, list. No, Scruton, Langley, Diskin, Sykes, Ainscore, Elima, Carney, all Move. the absent. Hold. Goal. Three. Move. And hold. Goal. Penkovic, number nine. Good ball. Just couldn't get away. Good tackle. Lovely play. I think it's uh, Paul White looking for some yeah. action. They made good use of the wingman, both Warrensy and White coming inside. Here is Pankovic again. Oh, that's a try. And they keep hitting back. Frank Martini. 34 years of age, but what support play from the big man. Didn't have far to go, but it's all about being at the side of the man who makes the break. And he's a long experience in the game. Delighted. It's a fantastic game with this inside ball. It is. It creates the space. And Ben Black goes again. Just watch. The inside ball. Now you are steps. You know, again, you can it's like a sieve for the defense at the moment. So um, an exciting game. But as you said, Ray. These coaches will be absolutely pulling their hair up for the defensive work of these players. <laughs> he loved that, he enjoyed that. Look at that arm in the air, smile. Great uh, stalwart of the game of rugby league. There's a lot of work in the community now in and around Halifax. And, uh, Danny Jones. No problem. So, Bradford just can't put Halifax away. They keep hitting back. Here we are, just watch again. Made a great difference, Penkovic, since coming on. Penkovic and Ben Black. Creating a hard work around the ruck. Got to tighten it up. Arvan with the kick. 2018, two points the difference. 
And hold. Again, just watch, hold. you know. Possession, 56-44. And then again, territory, 55 in Bradford. Two. And I think every time they've Eight. been Go. in the you know, in the attacking zone, they've scored. And I think it's very similar to Halifax as well. I think one of the big the big differences now with these dummy runs that since Penke... Oh! Arvan! <laughs> well, I was just about to praise uh, Pankovic for doing the dummy runs, putting pressure on Bradford. Smack pass, Patrick Arvan picks it up. 100 points from him for the club this season. This game's like a bit of tick and pass rate, to be honest. Yeah. I think they want to score every time, every, every tackle they want to score. They've got to have a platform. Whatever. Here we go. Again, great run from McNabb. Just trying to miracle ball. Keep it simple. There's a reaction. That's a very, very easy try. And a, an even easier conversion. As I said, this uh, lad, uh, Patrick uh, Arvan, taking advantage of the uh, interception. One of many players with the Teata 2 Roosters back in New Zealand, Shantane, Happy, the Paul brothers, Robbie and uh, Henry. Long line of players from that uh, small club there in New Zealand. Certainly making a name here with Bradford. Goal kicking and scoring size. Conversion to Bradford goal from number five, Patrick O'Hara. Here we are, look. Just watch a lovely run. Picks the wrong runner, really. Tries to go for the miracle ball. Arvan picks it up. Here we are. Very simple try. <laughs> well, Mick Potter and uh, Stuart Duffy don't look all that uh, happy, even no. though they are uh, leading by 26 points to 18. I think they'll be happy, you know, at half time if they don't concede Inside. another Halifax try before half time. And then he can absolutely rip into them defence. Attacking wise, they played very well. Defensively, both Two. sides have been poor, which has made an exciting Hold. game. Move. Halifax now needed to keep Bradford quiet in this final four minutes of this half. If Bradford have a possibility of pulling away here from the home side. Izui and Watini going in there. James uh, Donaldson, the youngster. Holds goal for. 40. 40. Kyle Riggs, good positional uh, play there from. Uh, Warren Sheep. Yeah. What? The big Move. six now, Ray. Let's not, Hold. you know, just go. Calm on, down Rob. a little bit. No mistakes. Ooh. No. He's given a penalty for uh, yeah, obstruction. obstruction. Going round the back. Be it's worth having a look at that. Let's have a look. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. There's a block there, but the tackle know. could have been made by oh, her, yeah. but anyway, so... You can't again, just put your hands in the air and... Yeah, uh, the referee's interpretation, the tackle could have been made by her, but so... A little harsh. A problem One. here Move. now for Halifax then, less Hold. than three minutes remaining. Yeah. 26-18, they have to keep out this Bradford side. Four or six points could be vital here to the visitors. Yeah, big set here, yeah, big set of six. Donaldson does well, gets the ball away. Short into passing here from uh, Bradford. And uh, silly, another set of six. Hands in. Hands in there at the, uh, the tackle. Trying to knock the ball out of the man's uh, grasp. He's lost it. Well then. Burgess picks up. Burgess puts it down for a try. Is this a steal or what, a knock-on? That's what, the thing, is it? Was he? Did he knock it on or did he steal it? Yeah. I think it was a one-on-one -on -one steal. I think the reaction of the players. We'll see. But there's a. Uh, good. Just have a look. Looks like ripped out. I think. I think it's play on. I do. Yeah, what, what position? 
What position was Burgess when he picked it up? Oh. Yeah, that's the thing. Was he offside position? I think, I think we're going to get a very quick decision. To try, and that is a bitter blow to Halifax. They really needed to defend her for the dear lives in that three or four minutes. But again, yeah, it was a mistake by uh, Miles Greenwood, and I think he, you know he was in Danny Jones as a shield. Just got Tom. to be careful, Ray. You know, it's just not giving those simple mistakes. Tom uh, Burgess there, the youngest brother, just 19 of Sam and George, who were at South Sydney. And a straightforward kick for Arvan. And a crucial four, or more than likely six points before half time. Arvan then. Simple effort, two points. The conversion for the ball from number five, Patrick Arvan. Yeah, just watch. Take the ball in, Hargreaves. Ball is stolen. Try. Okay, lads. Simple as that. But but why would you Outside. want to steal uh, a ball two metres from your own line with a minute to go? And hopefully not to concede a try, which. Uh, no, didn't you, 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 you put the tackle in, surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One move. Every Hold. try that's been conceded Stop. has come from a mistake, mm. right? 32 18 then for Bradford. Two, move! Still, Wait. less Stop. than a minute remaining. Good running. Still, Play Halifax's on, ball. One. Play on, back Zero. to one. It was knocked down. Less than 20 seconds to go, though. They're going to have to kick this eventually and take a chance. Yeah. 15 no, seconds no. remaining. 32 18. Oh, he's going himself. He's got it. He's got it down. <laughs> he's got it down. He's given the try. Well, that was for a forward thinking here, I'm afraid, when I said kick it. Halifax had more idea than me. They knew what they were doing. They passed the ball. Well, again, it's that man. Penkovic, there's the break, lovely offload, but then Penkovic gets it. He has been threatening, hasn't he? Oh, Penkovic, great ball, look at that. Lovely finish, lovely finish. Well, I tell you what, you know, this is just a crazy game. <laughs> it's entertaining. Very entertaining, but, you know, Attack was great. The coaches are just going to say, Look, boys, let's try. If you shore up the defense a little bit, we can actually win this. I mentioned, I mentioned the heat down there, but I mean, you know, it's not as if you're in a furnace, is it? It can't be that. It's just poor defense, me. And uh, Danny Jones really uh, getting a haul of points there for himself. Good uh, two points there. For uh, Bradford, and we've had a real try uh, fiesta. 32 points to 24, 56 points in 40 minutes, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more to come. If you like tries, this is the match to be watching. It was a fiery start from Halifax. They look nervous, though. Bradford first onto the scoreboard and second as well. We have had 10 tries in total and 10 different try scorers. But every time it looked as if Bradford were opening up a convincing lead, Halifax would hit back. And they have managed to keep the gap at no more than eight at half time. It's been thrilling stuff. They've come from all shapes and sizes. They've come from interceptions as well. It has been an absolute try fest. But the big thing is that the, that the gap is only eight. And Halifax still think that they have a chance. 
thanks to Danny Jones there. That's why the smile is on his face, because our score is Halifax 24, Bradford Bulls 32. And look at all those different names on there. Penkovic, he's a guy with real pace on the Halifax side. And we love the look of Warrency as well. Lots to discuss and dissect. But first, let's hear from Damien. Yes, I'm with uh, Robbie Hunter-Paul here on the touchline. Robbie, there's always a danger in these uh, Super League v Championship games that the Super League side will run away with it. But this is a genuine contest. It, it really is today, Damien. And, and, you know, the, the, the thing is, both teams aren't showing the greatest respect to their defences. But at the moment, actually, it's making for a very entertaining game. So I'd actually like to keep it just the way it is. And we might be looking at 50 points apiece. What will the coaches be saying in the dressing rooms apart from tighten up your defence? They'll definitely be saying, well, first they'll definitely be saying, hey, sort our defence out. What they'll probably want to do is cut out the error mistake. I think it's been quite a high count, especially from Halifax. You know, we spoke about it just before the half-time finish. We were saying if Halifax weren't making as many mistakes as they, as they are, then they probably and possibly might be winning this game. How important was it to score late on through Danny Jones? Oh, very important, very important. They had to, to, to score, score right at the end of the game there to keep it within two points of, of which it is. Um, very important because, you know, they're, they're still in the game. They've got the backing of their fans behind them. And what they'll have come the second half, say 20 minutes to go in the game, if the score is the same, what they'll have is belief in themselves. And, you know, there's the argument that Halifax have been together longer than the Bradford Bulls have. Thanks, Robbie. Back to you, Claire. Thanks, Damien. And let's have a look at the statistics. They mentioned errors there. In fact, they're dead level on errors, seven each. But Jamie Peacock, I know the, the, the figures that jump out on at you there are total possession yeah, and total territory. Yeah, it is. I think if you um, was Super League clubs playing each other and you had 60% of the ball, you'd expect to be maybe 20 points in front. I think it shows how well Halifax are doing to be actually still in the game. Only having had 40% of the ball, they're, do, they're doing a fantastic job to still be within eight points. And Brian, I know as a coach you're going to be saying what is going on out there, but it's thrilling to watch. Well, the only, only defence we're seeing is defence around the field. <laughs> because the, simple, the simple fact is, is that it's a little bit like wrestling rugby. Now, you know, when you see a game of wrestling, you're right, it's your goal to have a go and be the hero now and we'll boo the next bloke and then you can have a go. It's your goal to score to try, then another try at the other end, another try at the other end. The team that actually stiffens up and bends their backs a bit could win this game. They're a fabulous chance, Halifax. Absolutely, and, uh, and Mick Potter here discussing with his Bradford players exactly the mistakes they're making, and, and I'm sure saying to them, listen, you might be in front, but this is dangerous. This is really dangerous here. Yeah, it is, yeah. The f I mean, the first 10 minutes went to Bradford, no doubt about that, but I, I think um, the following 30 after that, I've been Halifax as much as anything, and I think it's been the introduction of the players off the bench. If you look at the bench, Azu, Penkovic, Watim, Jones, three out of those four have scored. Halifax are very, very lucky, though, not to have That's had a player sent off. I mean, this was in very early probably stages. not the kind of defence we're talking about. Sam yeah. Barlow, yeah. I think, I think he's gone by the principle you can't run without your head. I think Andy Lynch has done very well to get up there, hasn't yeah, he? He's probably done, done um, him some a favour there. They've he's done Barlow a great favour, yeah. because in any other competition, any other time, a referee's thinking, do I need to pull my red car now here? Because he's smacked him clean around the chops there, Claire, and that's not allowed. No, it's not. I love it when you talk like that. Just right. put it so clearly. <laughs> anyway, Bradford picked themselves up, dusted themselves down. I thought, right, we better get on the scoreboard. And indeed <laughs> they did. They kept on pressure on Shad Royston, who had a baby boy just a few weeks ago. He was the first on the scoreboard. I came from a came from a Halifax area, and we talked about that before the game, being squeaky clean. But these three guys here have got to have a better responsibility for the dummy half, because he's just going to dive straight back onto the line, taken by surprise. It's really soft try, but we, we crack on a little bit and we see it three or four times. So 13, 24, Bannister and, and Bezik and the fullback need to do a whole lot better than that because the threat is where the ball is. You can't move at mark until the ball's either left or a player's left with the ball. So you have to teach your players where the ball is is where the threat is. Now, Halifax, in, in terms of their fans, are getting very, very frustrated at a number of what they thought were forward passes. And this is one of the more obvious ones, led to a try. Yeah. But was this a forward pass? Well, I mean, Halifax have helped them from the mistake, giving the ball back here. We see that, that's free possession. And they did look a little bit nervous the first 10 minutes, didn't they? Yeah. They hit. Here we go. We, this, is the, this is the play which doesn't look forward. It looks like it's a great face ball, a cut-out pass, and Gareth Rayner will finish that every day of the week. Here we go, we're seeing the same going forward and to all intents and purposes, that puts Rayner away with 20 metres to go down the sideline for a, for a great score. But I thought the, the, the question was, was it forward? We saw on some other angles and a couple of passes before that, we're thinking, a couple of forwards there, which doesn't help the smaller club in a tussle like this. 
Now, what absolutely had to happen was that Halifax had to score, Jamie, otherwise there was a danger of Bradford running away with it. And this was a real fingertip job from, from Jim Gannon. Yeah, I think it's the first time anyone for Halifax actually run into the ball with any intent. Jim Gannon's played Super League, he's not frightened of Super League opposition, runs on the ball hard and scores a great try there. And I think that lifted the whole team. They realised they had a chance of winning the game then. It wasn't going to be stopped, and the intent Jamie's talking about sometimes it's a matter of just run as hard as you can towards the line and get the ball over it, and Jim Gannon gave the example. And it's amazing, when you see really good players, and this is true of any sport, they know where a winning line is or they know where the try line is and they will make sure that they make it. Yeah, he did that, yeah, he, he has Super League experience and he's a very good player, Jim Gannon, has been for a long time and it, it was a great um, try and a great example to set by a captain. Now, we talked about defensive errors and we're going to see a pretty major one here. Yeah, th this is the one we're talking about when, you know, they, they're just not quite and it's it's difficult to say anything other to Graham Holroyd is that you need to make a tackle son well Phil you know, Bentham the referee is the only one who's in the right well, position he well, could probably, have made it probably <laughs> Phil Bentham needed to have a word with Graham Holroyd that's not my tackle Graham that's <laughs> think, your tackle yeah Bradford need to do more of that you would mm. imagine that would be in Bradford's game plan to get at Holroyd for Platt to be running on the inside of Holroyd's shoulder and I think if they do that they'll score more tries in the second half if we're talking about Halifax players though that we that we have caused some excitement. When Sean Penkovic came off the, the bench, didn't he make a difference? They look like a different side. He's a threat. He's quick. And here, the same rules apply to Bradford that did to Halifax. Lestrange has gone too quick there, and Penkovic is too smart. He should have been a Super League player for a long time, Sean Penkovic, and he's been a great asset for this Halifax team. But any good hooker, if you sniff a try there, it's like goal. You're sniffing goal. He's absolutely get the ball over the line, and he won't miss that opportunity. What was interesting was the different ways in which tries were scored. I mean, actually, we saw a good example of second rower selling a couple of dummies and just keeping running. This is Elliot Whitehead for Bradford. Well, the clever part of this play was the fact that they decided to run it because they had the numbers on the last play. That's confidence. But the two Halifax players need to do a whole lot better. Somebody has to take Whitehead because he's the man with the ball. Whilst the ball's a threat on the line, whoever's carrying the ball needs to be stopped. And so the communication aspect of what Halifax done there has probably been out in, in relation to who's taking what at what time. But it's a great dummy. He's, he's a, a classic player, player, isn't he? Yeah. He's a very good player, very good young player. Yeah. A lot of time for him, he can play that boy. Now, Halifax are going through what they might have to do in the second half um, with the help of a of a board there on which are written various instructions. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> Probably don't take dummies. Yes. Kick the ball better, look after the ball better and mark up at dummy half. Is that what you're going to write in it, Nobby, when you <laughs> get there? When I, when I get in, I'm going to say <laughs> In the middle of the shot there, you can see Frank Wartine, and he's one of the Halifax players who is on the scoreboard. He makes Whitehead look like a, you know, a near slip of a thing. He's a big lad, Wartine. Yeah, he is, yeah. He's a, another good player. Um, as I said before, the bench have come on and been fantastic for Halifax. They've all come on and contributed and made a difference to the game. When you're a bench player, that's your aim, to come on and make an impact in the game. And all four players have done that. They, they have been the best four players for Halifax. And it's a shame, in a way, for Halifax that they've let silly things happen and, and the Patrick Arvan interception is an example and let Bradford score the odd soft try. Well, they look like scoring again, didn't they, here, Halifax? Penkovic, again, has attracted three defenders. What he hasn't done is either pick the pass over the top or somebody hasn't gone into a hole for him, offered him the opportunity to make the short pass. So he's gone for the, the money ball, as we call it. We want the money ball to the winger. And Arvan's too clever for that. He recognises outnumbered. The good thing for Halifax there is they created another overlap and should have exploited it better than they did. But Arvan's too smart. He's got his big claws up and finished the play. Yeah, and he looked quick there as well. Um, now, tell me about Tom Burgess, because he's on the scoreboard. Now, he's the brother of Luke and Sam. Yes, yes, he is. Yeah, he's a, a, another big human being. They're, they're all massive out there, the Burgesses. And it's great to see him score there. He's um, been playing regular now for Bradford. And... Um, comes on and that's a nice little try isn't it if you're a prop just to score up score like that yeah it's, it, I think Penkovic goes for the ball steal here it goes backwards and all the people in the blue and white shirt stop well yeah. Burgess doesn't he says no I've got a free try here which he, he duly picked up and got his rewards and that meant that Bradford were leading 32-18 at that stage but full credit to Halifax because every time we thought well this match is running away from them they've come back and they've scored and they did again just before half time thanks to Danny Jones. Wasn't it that man Penkovic again? That This is Penkovic again, probing, looking, getting his arm free. That's a fabulous ball, but somebody's offered themselves into the space, and that happens to be Danny Jones, and again he gets the four-pointer.
Well, let's have a look at all the half-time scores because the other nine ties started a bit earlier than this one. Now, look at that top score. Batley 10, Huddersfield 10 at half-time. Great match there. And another one that's level is Dewsbury against Swinton. That's 24-all. Uh, Wakefield have got the edge against Doncaster, or, which you'd expect. The Super League teams are ahead in all the other games. Um, and with this from the Championship, there are oh, absolutely battering London scholars there, 32 nil. But this match is definitely an intriguing one. What are your thoughts looking ahead to the second half, Brian? Well, I'm not sure that Halifax can change the way that they're defending, or, you know, like in a 15-minute period. But that's some of the things that they need to do. If they kick and they're patient, we can see they score points. They're going to get some opportunities. They will score some points. But I also think that Bradford are in the same position. If they get to the right end of the field with Lestrange and Platt and, you know, people punching holes whited on the fringes, they'll get the opportunity to score again. So it just scores the most, I suppose. And as players, what are you thinking at this stage, Jamie? If I was in the Halifax dressing room, I'd be thinking, great, we've got a chance here of, of having a big upset. It's not, not very often you get a chance to do that as a player, be involved as an underdog and, and not somebody out who's um, bigger than yourselves. And think, we've only eight points here. If a bounce of ball goes our way and we can get a few penalties, we've got a chance of winning the game. Time for big men and little men to stand up and win a badge of honour. Um, speaking of which, our commentator today, Ray French, has three new letters after his name and they are MBE. Mr. Raymond French for services to Rugby League. He was named in the Queen's New Year's Honour list and went to Buckingham Palace to receive his MBE from Her Majesty. A long chat there as well, Ray. Was the, was the Queen uh, asking you about yeah, your... Yeah, she was, yes? well, she was asking me about uh, the game, how it was doing, was it competitive? And uh, she said uh, that uh, she found it a uh, very, very entertaining sport. <laughs> Really? It's like brother and sister there, eh, to be honest. <laughs> she was asking me also, is, is Jonathan uh, Davis still arguing with me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or is, he, or is he showing you new respect? <laughs> A wonderful moment, though, Ray, and I know that everybody in the sport of rugby league and everybody working for the BBC who knows you knows only too well that you, there couldn't be anyone more deserving. I mean, many congratulations. Well, it was, I don't know, it was a little bit embarrassing, I think, when it was uh, first announced, but uh, I, I think it was very, very, very good for the game. Uh, I was quite pleased that the game was, uh, was honoured alongside myself. I, I'm, I'm, del I'm delighted Ray's, uh, you know, won the award. It's, uh, he is, uh, he's been a great servant to the Rugby League, you know, great ambassador throughout, you know, the country. Um, you know, thoroughly, thoroughly deserved, you know, and believe it or not, Ray is a real nice man. <laughs> We argue all the time, but no one deserves better. It's been an absolute pleasure to work with Ray. I've been very fortunate after finishing. I've worked with the great Ray French and the late Bill McLaren. You know, I couldn't have asked for any better. Congratulations, Ray French. I don't think there's any believe it or not about it, Jonathan. Everybody, everybody <laughs> believes it. <It's laughs> he is. He's a wonderful man, Ray, and you can hear his passion coming through in the way he commentates and bringing these matches alive. Well, it, it's not difficult to bring a match like this alive because it really is a tri-fest and it still is in the balance. Bradford are leading, but only by 32 points to 24. And these Halifax players know that there is a just the sneaking chance that they could cause the big upset of the fourth round of the Challenge Cup. Let's see what the second half holds. Ray, it's over to you. Well, Jonathan, when you and I were chatting before kickoff, we said we thought this would be a high-scoring game, but I don't think we envisaged ten tries in the first half. No, and i got to pick a man of the match up there, so the guy who's doing the scoreboard is actually my current man of the match, to be honest. Oh. Backwards. Backwards, <laughs> says uh, uh. the referee. Move! Let's uh, go. Start like we left off then, is it? I can imagine now the Bradford balls, the first 20 minutes will up the tempo, up the physicality, up the pace and intensity and try and finish this game off. I think uh, one of the big problems, all right, Halifax, there's another one. Halifax have only completed 12 sets out of 22, but a Super League side like Bradford also only completed 14. Well, in 32 seconds of the first, second half, two mistakes. There's yes. another one. Another There's another one. one. Pankovic. <laughs> Sean Pankovic oh, takes what. the ball. I must say, Sean Pankovic is having a very, very good game since he's arrived yes. on the, the pitch. He's been very influential. Move. It's coming on. Hold. Third, 
52 24 then. Wait. Move! Wait, hold. A whole Go. second half remaining. Azui smashing down the middle. Move! Great uh, campaigner, former Hull KR uh, player. That's good work. Five. Why Move. is he coming in now then? Go. Nice, Rinse. sensitive kick. Sensible kick, look at it, that's it, it. It sends him back, doesn't it? Good chase. He's got a good bounce either. But there's the poor tackle. Yeah, an easy 15 mm. metres gained again. But he no. should have been tackled five metres no. from his own line. Yes. I think Bradford Two. have got an injury. Move. I think it's uh, Kopchak, I think, who's, uh, who's coughed one. Oh, good hit. Good driving Three. again from Izui and... Uh, What's in it? Wait, wait, These two wait. forwards making a big impact since their arrival on the uh, the pitch. Former St Helens uh, player there, Bryn uh, Hargreaves, oh. moved across again with one of many to also this season, a rebuilding process. I think that's what we've got to understand about this Bradford right. side. It, it is a rebuilding, a, a totally new team, Jonathan. Go. Yes, it is. Hold them, hold the tackle, that's it, that's should be held up. And over. Poor kick, really. Move the ball! Go! I think he put, he the, he put them under pressure a little bit, didn't he? What? Move! What a see, feeling Go. that uh, pressure. Pankovic now down this uh, side. Dylan uh, Nash. Pankovic Two. again. Move! Scampering, scurrying about. Making play all the time. And Warren, she's looking for some work in this half. He's coming, he comes inside hold, a lot. Hold. Go, hold on. Greenwood. Trying to Four. get around Move. the scrum oh. half mark. Uh, Herbert there just couldn't. Carly Izui is running like a two-year-old, isn't he? Yes, he's had a couple of good runs. Last Wait, tackle. Hold, hold. Last tackle. A judicious kick needed, I think. That's in the air. There is one. Can he get the bounce? Yes, he does. He's got it down. Oh! <laughs> Terrific kick. I think it's Sam Barrow. Sam Barrow, number 12, gets it down. Good bounce. Good kick. Sixth try in four games for Halifax. Well, again, a lovely little grab by the bounce is favourable, but Shad Royston just a little bit too slow in coming across. Just watch him, he's not in picture there. It's a lovely kick, a favourable bounce. Sam Barlow grabs it and scores. Back. Come Halifax again. They just won't let uh, Bradford relax, will they? But I mean, uh, a Super League side should be able to defend six tacklers, but every time Halifax get within 10 metres, it's a try. Well, as the boys in studio said, you know, it's uh, whoever shows that the defence should come away with the result. Danny Jones with the kick, already represented uh, Wales Rugby League. Left footed. Stro oh, just, just about to say strikes it well. There's hardly any wind out at the moment, but just edging outside that far upright. Here we go. It's just a simple pass, simple grubber. That should be covered by winger and full back. Not great communication. Barlow scores. Let's see if they can uh, get out the year without making a mistake. That's what they've got to do. They've got to hold this ball and put a kick downfield. Just four points the difference between Super League and Championship. But a long time to go. Well, Warren sees like a forward now, isn't he? Oh, bang on. He's a goal. I think he's enjoying himself. I, I, I think he thinks there's nothing to fear here. And this man, I do it. Ten years he's played in England as uh, McCarley. Four. Oh, I think someone's injured there. Is that Platt? He's in a. It's Sibbit. Oh, Sibbit, yeah. 
Just watch it. Oh, oh gets his head to gets the wrong his head side. To the side. Yeah. Cops one. Accidental. Yeah. Well, well, while Sibbitt's uh, having attention, we have a scoreline coming in from uh, Mount Pleasant there at Backley, and would you believe this? 18 14 for Backley at the moment against Huddersfield. And downstairs now, can we find Damien? I've got Mike Ostick, 18th man for uh, Halifax today. Mike, what did the coach Matt Callan say to the players at half time? Basically, we've got, uh, ju we just got to tighten up on our defence. Uh, can't let, allow uh, our, our errors to um, be used to, uh, to Bradford's advantage. You're still very much in the game, aren't you? It's a real contest today. Definitely. All we need to do, we need to complete our sets and uh, not stop making so many mistakes. Thanks, Mike. Right, cheers, Mike. A knock there then for uh, Ian Sibbett. Yes, that's uh, you Two. know for all the youngsters watching. That's important that you get your technique right. You get your head on the right side when you're tackling. Otherwise, you just cop one like that and uh, have a nasty <laughs> little bump. And you often get, and you end up with a nose like mine as well <laughs> if you don't put the head on the right think, hand side. Uh, I did that a few times. I think Kopchak is uh, <laughs> changing his jersey as well. A bit of blood on his jersey he comes back on. Here he is. So a little rest for the remainder of the players. Halifax to continue. And uh, Jim Gannon, number 15, still going forward. There were serious doubt. Only about 20 minutes before kickoff was he cleared to play. Ryan uh, Clayton and Joe Chandler were uh, on standby. You would think that uh, you know the experience. The professionalism of the bull should come through. Well, there, there just seems a casual air about the whole play well, of the bull. I think they've just been caught up in the in this game. You know, you score as a boy, as a boy. You see, said, we'll score, you score. There's another knock on. Referee, is he playing advantage? No. Oh, yes, he'd run a good angle there. There doesn't seem to be. I mean, you just look at this, there doesn't seem to be any. Passion coming from the the bulls at all. They're just going through the movements, passing it. You just need a little bit of direction and um, and guidance. And the halfback should be doing that. Should be telling the forwards, look, boys. You know, we should be walking over the top of these, and then getting field position and scoring tries. But they got to show the defence up as well. Miles uh, Greenwood, number one, coming up, and I'm sure Mick Potter will uh, not be happy with all this. That's kind of ironic, that is. Ironic cheer from the crowd again. Forward. I think the touch judge uh, helped in that decision. We go. Yeah. Yep. James uh, Child, good decision there. Well, move. Bradford then. Leading by just four points. Bradford, the Super League side. Halifax, 10th in the championship. Massive Three. difference between these two sides. And yet, four points here. That's a penalty. Silly penalty. Forward pass, then a penalty. Yeah, Barlow had his foot in there. Bryn Hargreaves. Five metres then to go. Heath Lestrange, Herbert, that's good running. Ooh, just Great tackle. What tempt tackle. Tempted to put the ball out though. Jones had to make the tackle. Well, it's another an penalty. Another penalty, interference at the play of the ball. All this puts pressure on the defenders, tires them out. Go. Lynch. Lynch. Now Hargreaves. Using the, the short side with Herbert, Move. twisting, turning, Move. common in rugby league these days too. Well, that's not a play of the ball. Oh. Well, that'll be interesting. Well, I think the referee is... I think he's been conned there. I think Mr Bentham has been conned there. 
I think he dropped that between him. Has he got it down? Held up. Time off. Ben, just check the ground in, please. Hands in. And then the reaction of, um, I think it's Kopchak again. Yes, it is. Well, has Kopchak got that will, down? Ben. Well, I think the referee was conned at that play of the ball. I thought it was well, thrown just yeah, between the legs. Well, we'll see now, we'll see. We wouldn't uh, mind seeing that. Let's have a look if he groans it. He does well to groan it, I think, if he does get it down. Hang on, get your legs underneath there, Greenwood. Oh, I don't think he's got it down, has he? I don't think he has as well. Penkovic is underneath. Greenwood is there as Greenwood's well. Greenwood's under. Let's have a look at the ball. There's the ball. Nothing conclusive there, is it? No the ball's there. There's the ball. There's the ball. I don't. You, I don't think you can give that. No. Well, my betting would be no try, but I'm mine. Ben Thaler is the video referee. Here we are. No try. Good decision. We still tackle one yeah, more. Yeah. Plenty of tacklers oh. left. Held up over the line, so the ball is replayed on that 10 meter line. <laughs> and Pankovic is telling uh, Craig Kopcha, I never touched the ball. All Two. smiles. Move. Still Bradford then, pressing strongly here now. Less strange. Still plenty strange tackles. again. Hargreaves. Hold. Hold. No penalties, no. Briggs. Herbert. Just not got the physique to get through on the last tackle. Well, this will be a, a good. Pankovic moves in very quickly. That was a good run. Oh, it's gone dead. That was a very, very good run by Pankovic. Terrific speed off the game, off the line. He put pressure on Bradford, Jonathan. Yes, and they survived, you know. Mm. First time they've really, you know, put their hand up in defence and survived the set. Could that be a turning point? And here's that man, Rob Warrensy again. He's oh, relishing, he's a sort of a wingman. Oh, he's lost the ball again. He's lost the ball. Elliot Whitehead has stolen it, crucial. What are they doing? It's like rugby league suicide, this is. <laughs> Lestrange. Kopchak. Herbert. Good shot ball. Lynch. Lee. Oh, he's lost it. Yes, read that well. Well, both sides have hardly completed half of the sets of six. Well, they've got a, a quick, you know, get one quick play of the ball, get a boot to it. Charles Royston is very, very flat, the bounce of the ball. You could be playing in the opposition 20-meter area. Well, Jamie Peacock was commenting on the uh, sets uh, completed. Bradford, 17 sets completed out of 30. You can't do that as a Super League <laughs> outfit, can you? No. Pankovic then to Ben Black. Little ship over the top. That's a good ball. Depends on oh. this bounce. Oh, it's a difficult one for him. Y you know, that's the wrong play. They've been under pressure, Ray, so uh, they needed a long kick. And uh, can we get down to uh, Robbie there? At the moment, Bradford just seem to be so desperate to get over the try line that they're causing themselves a whole heap of trouble. They understand that at this point in the game, if they can stretch that lead out to maybe 10 points, then they'll be able to get away with yeah. the game. Halifax, are on the same time that, they know that they need to stay into this game, and if they can hold out this set of six, anything can happen for the rest of this game. And uh, Bradford moving in uh, here then. Still a long time to go. Not much longer there at, uh, at Backley. We're Backley trail now, we understand, by 22-18. But still anybody's game over there to Huddersfield. Lestrange, Royston going for the line. He's, he's lost it. Well, it's just 100 miles an hour. Hmm. No, 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 no. You would think Bradford here with the bigger, presumably fitter, more powerful pack as a full-time uh, entity 
would keep the ball and just hold it and pound them. That's down all the they've got to do, you know. Oh, they're here again. <laughs> you can't talk, Jonathan. We can't talk. There's a try on a knock on. Any penalty. second. You know, that is a penalty. Definite penalty. <laughs> Time on. Referee's right here. That is yeah. a penalty. First off the first man. He's then into open play again. It's then one on one. Well, soon, no, you've got to do the discipline around this area. <laughs> Thank you, it says it was all right last week, but it's a different referee this week, and it's a different uh, game. Bradford then using the fact there to drive in. Bradford surely must come away with four or six points uh, from here. Brindner Hargreaves, good ball out wide there, that's a good try! And Ian Sibbett comes racing in, simple, sensible, effective rugby league, and it brings four points for the Bradford Bulls. Had to come, had to come, too much pressure. As you said, Ray, I think they haven't had any kind of direction, just to keep their heads a little bit. A try is, would come, there's the penalty, just watch this now. Play the ball, foot, yeah, comes back, that's a penalty. Yeah. It's the right decision, but on this occasion, again, look how many players around to play the ball. One dummy runner holds one, and then at six and sevens, extra men on the attack. Very, very simple try. And he comes in at a good angle, doesn't he? Yeah, but, you know, the, again, that's yeah. where they should have been attacking all the time on the fringes. Ian uh, Sibbett. Seasoned player with the Salford and Warrington and had a spell with the Melbourne Storm. Arvan. Not had a lot to do on the wing. The ball just not run his way, but plenty to do off that kicking tee. Another two points. Sibbit takes a breather. And Bradford ease out a little further. 38-28. Yeah, the next try will be crucial. If Bradford, as Robbie was saying, Bradford get the next one, then you know that could be a little bit too much for Harley Bucks. But uh, again, who knows in this game? How many times have we said if somebody gets the next one? It, it just doesn't work in this game, Jonathan. Not, not in this match. Uh, it's not if someone scores, if someone completes a set. <laughs> that's, a, that's what we should be talking about. And uh, I think we've got some words from uh, Damian Johnson down there. Michele Azu, the uh, big uh, Papua New Guinea forward for uh, Halifax, is off with a blood injury. He's taken a real battering around the face. He's gone for stitches. He's been impressive, hasn't he, this afternoon? But uh, he's down the tunnel and getting stitches as we speak. Hold. Goal. I think the uh, Halifax uh, coach, Matt Calland, uh, who was a centre with Bradford, two Challenge Cup finals, he'll be wondering what's happening with, uh, with the Bulls. Uh, even there, no, you know, like, why... What, you know, just... Composure, Hargreaves. Well, the errors, you know, that's a lot of errors and penalties. Okay, head in, that's it. Head and ball then to Halifax. Ben Black. One, move. Go. Only just a. Oh. Knocking down. Scrum to Halifax. Scrum to Halifax. Knocked on. Yeah, in actual fact, there is so much indiscipline around this play of the ball. Yes. I think that uh, the referee has got to get a yellow card out. I do. I, I really think he's got to uh, to make a stand. He's just making uh, a farce of this play of the ball. <laughs> well, hang on. Greenwood. Yeah. What? Halifax Move. now need to just settle down, only trailing by 10 points. This game not over, not by any means. Well, if they score next, again, Two. they're back in it, aren't Move. they? Neil uh, Cherry Hall driving down the left. Bannister. Three. Move. Penkovic. Oh. oh, he was thrown anywhere. Never oh. looked where that ball Move. was going. Almost an interception. Oh. Black. nearly got it. Took man and ball. Dylan uh, Nash. Knock on. Knock on. Well, I just Play thought on. it's just Zero. incredible. Play on, Move. says the referee. Hold. The amount of ball that's been spilled. I think the referee is looking for advantage all the time. He, he wants to keep Move. the game, uh, the game moving. Hold. 
two. That's good, Robin. Move. Yeah. Wait. Bryn Hargreaves. And this is what Bradford should be doing. They should well, be is. imposing Move. themselves on this side, That's tiring it. them out. And they, you know. Oh. Oh. Roars from the crowd, who again thought that was a forward pass. Lestrange, Herbert, good kick to space. Arvan's going for it. Just goes into touch. Just keep them down here, no? Yep. Well, we're coming up to the final quarter here in this match. 38-28 for Bradford, and uh, Bradford lost. Uh, Halifax lost three of the last four home games, and losing them mainly in this last quarter, running out of uh, steam, a little poor discipline. They need to hang in here. Go, no markers. Play on now. Three. Move! Go, three. Lee Patterson. Pankovic again. He's very Go. sharp. He could pass that ball. He's uh, the ball or his near side. Move. Elbow. Ball carrying Four. elbow. Hadn't Four. touched the ground. Hold. He's taken an entry there as, uh, as Greenwood. Ball to Ben Black. Kick. Rain oh, attacks it. Can they keep him in there? No, they can't. He got away. Yeah, good play, Rainer. And I think we can Three. hear uh, Chev Walker. Move. What's uh, the matter with him down Hold. there? Chev, uh, give us an update on the injury. You've got your foot packed in ice there. Um, yeah, just um, it's a suspected fracture at the minute. Um, so I'm just just icing it up. Starting the rehab as, as soon as possible, really. It's a real blow. What do you make of the game? It's like a basketball match. Oh yeah, we're um, we're not we're not respecting the ball enough. We're not sticking to his plan, and um, I think we just need to, to to get back to his plan and start working hard for each other. Um, we've been a little bit soft in areas. Thanks, Jeff. Hope you're back soon. Chad Walker amply summing up the game as far as Bradford are concerned. A bit soft in areas. Hey, turnover. Turnover. Go. One. Bob uh, Bezik, number 13. Hold, hold. Go. The sun still uh, Two. streaming down Move. here, quite warm down there, and this Wait. is the period Go. when uh, certainly some of these players should be tiring. Render. The part-timer of Halifax Stand. especially. Three. Can they hold in there? Penkovic to Black. Greenwood come up a lot in the uh, in the game, but just not managed to escape any would-be uh, tacklers. Danny Jones, chip again. Oh. A dive, it says uh, the referee. Yeah, I think he ran into. Uh, I think he ran into Pankovic. the. Yeah, he ran into the player. I think. Yeah, I think he ran into him. Watching number nine in front of the kicker. Run, oh, yeah. Runs into, yeah. I think, runs into I think, I think, uh, I think that's uh, an Oscar winner by the end of the season. Bradford now then, using the short uh, route, charging down the middle there. Lynch. A couple of tacklers remaining. Good kick. Here's a race. Warrensee, oh, Warrensee was caught out a little bit there. Little delay in turning round. Good yeah. play from Bradford down that left flank. I think it was Whitehead chasing again. A big game, Whitehead. Just over. One, move, hold. And we understand Go. that uh, Huddersfield have uh, managed to get Two. back in that game Move. and a final result there 28 Go. to 18 for Huddersfield over Batley but great effort from the uh, gallant youths the Batley side as they were once known and watch the play the ball here why would you why would you do that you know it's just they haven't had the ball of possession for ages just keep cool play the ball you know they need a little bit of um, territory and possession now 
there doesn't appear to be a, a person at the moment on either side. Close to the play of the ball. Oh, right. here's a try. Maratrena goes over at the corner. Simple try made again by younger Whitehead. The ball inside. Rayner took his uh, his chance, and Bradford had a score. Gareth Rayner. And that could be the clincher. It's a second try. You just watch. Whitehead makes it. He drags the defender across. Ben Black goes too early. No communication between Warrensy and Ben Black. Just watch. Goes away and you've got to communicate now. Unfortunately, both men go for the same man. Rayner comes inside on the short inside pass. Easy finish for Rayner. A, a good finish, inexperienced uh, player. It's a bread and butter finish for oh, a winger. Yeah. He already had to do. Again, created by uh, young Elliot Whitehead. And uh, the kick to come. Young uh, Whitehead having a cracking game. If he's not scoring tries, he's making them down this uh, left uh, flank, running like a centre. Arvan. Well, he's had a lot of goal-kicking practice this he afternoon has, and uh, tells me he did a lot of practice with a oh, tremendous goal-kicker from down under Darrell uh, Halligan, who uh, who coached him. Owes a lot to him. And there's another nice two kick. points just inside that upright. So, a much more relaxed uh, Bradford party there. Yeah, you yeah, just watch it. The way they go, they've got to communicate. Ben Black has got to communicate with Warren C. It doesn't happen. Easy try. Forty-four twenty-eight. Move. Go. Radford seemingly now in control. Well, Two. you would think so now. Seventeen minutes left. There's uh, Mikhaili Aizui strapped up and uh, wearing a number 32 jersey, so they must have had a, a lot of blood in there from what looks like to have been a bad cut. But it's Bradford now. Still in possession, the ball going backwards. Here is that man Whitehead again. He's causing havoc in the middle now. That's a high tackle. Getting a little uh, frustrated, this Halifax side there. Uh, yeah, Neil uh, Cherry home. Well, uh, in initial contact wasn't high, but the arm went up. Pick your man, Bannister or Cherry home. Two. It's another six. Well, they're going for two points. Mm. I can't <laughs> believe that. 44 28, 15 minutes remaining. Super League outfit. Well, I don't think, uh, look at Mick Potter, I don't think Mick can believe it. I think, you know, looking, Super League outfit, <laughs> yes, but also running low on confidence, Ray. Yes, yeah. And a lot of players, uh, ad admittedly, missing. A lot of senior there. professionals missing who, uh, uh, we know, would give uh, a good lead in the, in yeah, the side. I think uh, the coach, Mick Potter, would be content to get through this game if he can and uh, hopefully get some players back. So, Arvan. Another two. Forty-six, twenty-eight. Turn you run. Good uh, crowd uh, here for this. Uh, this game, the Onside. fans renewing a, a very famous uh, rivalry. Knock on. Oh, no, it was a knock on. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of uh, gesticulation and uh, <laughs> words from the Halifax side, but it's a knock on. Well, even from that angle, well, you can see it come off his hand. And, and the, the, the lad who knocked yeah. it on, Dylan Nash. Uh, was complaining more than anybody. So, Bradford in possession, Herbert. 
one. Move! Can hold, Halifax hold, get a second uh, wind uh, here? The 14 minutes remaining. Two. Move! Go! Come on, Sean. Don't forget we'll have the uh, draw for the uh, Challenge Cup on uh, BBC Three. Two here shortly. Move. After this match. Hold. And there should be some crackers uh, very, of ties yeah. with a lot of Super League sides in it. Very good run by Lynch. And Lynch and uh, Kopchak has, uh, have come you know, to the fore in the, in the second half. Five, move, go. Keep the strange. Play on. Nash, the right man in the right place, but Halifax can't get away from here. One or two of them limping. In fact, the man who's just got the ball, he didn't want that ball. He, he limped back, did Bob uh, Bezik. They could really turn he's, the screw here yeah, now. He's Bradford, in difficulties. Yeah, Bradford Bulls could absolutely smash him. You just watch this. If they really switch on, Halifax are really tired, out on their feet. No one wants it. This they, man wants it. Yeah, they could really punish him here, though. Good well ball, done. good play. Now then, here's a check. Oh, he's cut inside. Can he go? Yes, he can. He's got one. With him, just can't get away. Oh, good tracking back. Hold. Terrific defence there from Bradford, but it's Halifax. Azui again. He's been outstanding as Macaulay Azui for has, the Halifax this afternoon. Warren, she's been busy as well. Thank you, oh, Too much. No. Just too hard on the, the ball there. Hold, lads, come on, discipline. But, but tremendous play from Halifax here. The goals, yeah, they were really, really under the cosh there. But uh, Azui saw the opening, took it up. Wasn't scared to float the pass. One, move. Back up, Michele. Go one. Here come Bradford again. Here's that man Whitehead. Gets it off. Well, two, move. Rainer. Oh. Had to dive for that ball. The fans on this near side screaming for a forward pass. Three, move, hold. Well, it's, uh, but play on, hold. says uh, I think Mr. Be, Benton. I think they'll be complaining. The fans about the forward pass. Yeah. Yes. Andy Lynch. Four, move. Wait, lads, wait. Go for. Kyle. Uh, Briggs, Five, former Featherstone, move. number 32 on his back, Go. making play on the last tackle. OK. Yeah, sensible kick. That's in the touch, so it'll be scrum on the 10-metre line. But he's limp, he's limping, though. One or two uh, Yo, limping out there, there Mark uh, Herbert uh, limping now of the uh, Bradford. OK, heads in. Bradford uh, staff Out. just having a word with him, just uh, going to bring him off, I think. Problem there with his right foot. Here's Bradford then. Good uh, running again. I think that's uh, Paul One. White. Yes, right. Hold. Hold. Go. Young uh, Adam O'Brien coming on for Bradford now. Just 17 years of Two. age. He should have plenty Move. of uh, energy in him. Go. Halifax. Bezik. Leg seems OK now. A lot of courage, a lot of commitment from this uh, Halifax side to score 28 points. Here, oh, and still keep going. We've got it. Oh! Play on, said the referee. Oh, well and played. And Patrick Arvan comes back with really. it. He and could now score, can yeah. he score down the left-hand side? No! No! Oh, surely, well, Halifax, I think, passed. He's got the ball. You can do that. Sloppy play. Well, we've had everything in this match. Yep, everything. I thought Halifax passed the wrong way. Here is Bezik. He's got an overlap out wide. Can he get it to him? Yes, he does. Oh, he's cut inside again. He makes play out wide there now. Oh, oh. Forward. forward pass thrown into touch. How to blow a try in two, you know, two <laughs> tries in two minutes. <laughs> Great ambition, you know, great counter-attack, mm. but you have to be clinical. Didn't happen. Bezik the creates ball, the space, and now they have the overlap. You're thinking, ball. yep, they must the score. Two on one. 
Give no. it earlier. Back up, back Overlap up, yeah. was there. Well intended, but I think even better just holding on to the ball. But certainly, uh, Jonathan, the, the fans will go home here with a plenty of talking oh, points. Talking points, it's been amazing. <laughs> They won't be talking about well, the defence, Ray. No, well, that's the Hold. Challenge Cup. Go. You don't forget the, the draw for the next round after this match. Bradford here coming away. Oh! Why did he dummy? Well, why he did young James ball. Donaldson dummy there? He dummy Royston. There be, I think they had good cover on Royston. Yeah. Inside here. Bradford going for the corner. Three. John Bateman Move. cutting back inside. And hold. That's a penalty. Hand out. Danny Jones hand interfering at the play of the ball. Hands in. And that's about the fifth or sixth penalty that <laughs> Halifax have conceded Go. interference. Yeah. Trying to slow this uh, Super Go. League side down. Move! Two metres now. Back. Yeah, this could be the final. Oh, less than eight minutes remaining. Dummy. They've got to score. A chance here now. Mm. Oh! Now then, does he off? score it? One, or did he not come? Grounding. He's looking for obstruction too. and he's looking for grounding, is Mr. Bentham. He's not sure. I think the grounding's fine, to be honest. The obstruction is the big question mark for me. Obstruction around the play of the ball. Just look at this. I think that is obstruction. Yeah. I, I think this is a definite obstruction. Let's have a look it's, to see if he crosses. It's, Does he it stop? stops Hang the on. first defender. Yeah, it stops him, and then he hesitates. Yeah. He can't get at him. He didn't really, he didn't Sam really Barlow could not get forward the Halifax number 12. I don't think he tried that hard, but I would say it's a good finish. Yeah. No try. He puts it down well. But I don't think it'll be a try. No, it's not. Penalty. Yep. Obstruction. <laughs> and uh, Gareth Rayner looks very quizzical. Why? But. Ben uh, Taylor, the video referee, has judged so. A hat trick would have been on the cards for. Uh, Rainer, but not to be as yet. Hold. He's Still, he's got six and a half minutes remaining. First. Seven and a half minutes Move. remaining. Hold, hold. <laughs> Two. Move. Azui. Three. Still Move. taking the ball forward, gamely, gallantly. Go. Holroyd. A little bit too much overpassing there. Yeah. Move! Yeah. Wait! Nobody wait, really goal. beat anybody with the pass. Oh, Not down. No advantage. Time off, ball kicked away. Ball Kyle kicked Briggs away. knowing Time exactly off. what he'd done. Yeah. 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 Knew what he was doing. Kyle Briggs. Heads in, fellas, you need one more. One more here, pal. Halifax showing how enthusiastic they are. They're rushing. Okay. Well, they were. They've come away from it now. They rushed initially to the pack. Out. Pankovic. He's and off. a kick He's off. straight He's from off. the goal. Number two's off. Play the scrum. Play the scrum. That's a 40 20, isn't it? Yeah. No, they were outside. Sorry. Right, no, it right wasn't. Right. He was outside the 40. Just, just uh, outside. Yeah. But uh, number two, Lee Patterson looked offside if he'd got hold of that ball. Okay, yeah, that's it. All right. Ready, Heath? Let's go. So, Bradford uh, scrubs. And all Bradford have to do really is uh, hold this ball. One, play sensible move. rugby, play out these sets hold. of six, put the go. ball down in that uh, Halifax uh, 20 meter area. Two. And they're Move. in the next round. Go. Young O'Brien. Three. Getting great experience uh, here, Back just uh, 17 years of age. His fourth uh, appearance in the Bradford uh, jersey. Four. Relax. 
very young pack this uh, Bradford one young Bateman is 17 years of age O'Brien 17 Burgess just 19 I think you've got to take a lot of that into consideration, uh, Jonathan. Yes, how young, young this Bradford side are. But they've, you know, front. they've really done well, though. You know, it's just the fact they have another, the, 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 no the, you know, the direction Elliot. given from half back. Good ball. Great angle. Oh, he can't get it away. No. But good handling. Halifax entertaining their uh, their fans, running and passing this ball to the last. Three, move. The silver. Less than five minutes remaining. Pankovic. That was. Try. Now then, did he? Uh, did anybody not come? Well, Whitehead's not bothered. He's going to score under the post. But will the referee consult the video Just referee? On, was it knocked down? Uh. What's the attack board, you think? Which one? What's that short kick? That's a knock on, isn't it? 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 Or is that the tackle, Ray? What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I may have been knocked out of his hand in the tackle. Let's have a look. You might get a better vision from this side. I don't know. Just watch. On this one, does he get the hand? Have we got a mark on it? No. Art Steffi hits the hand, doesn't he? But as a... Is Does he hit the ball or yeah, hit the I hand? Think, I think he hits a bit of everything. So is that in the tackle? I think, I think they're coming back. I don't think it's going to be uh, uh, awarded. It will be a knock-on, I think. Both sides standing on the halfway line. Nobody really confident. But... But I know it's right. I don't, I know some, I've seen some given. I've yep, seen some yep, not given. Yep, yep. It's, you know, it... it it's very difficult for the referees. You need clarification okay, on, you know, if it is the part of the tackle, if it's not, is it a knock-on? Yeah. Some are given, think, some aren't given. I think with the scoreline at 46-28 and less than five minutes yeah, remaining, not much difference, it's an easy hey, decision to give. Hey, two minutes to but go in the, in the grand final and, and or point, Challenge and a, Cup. And a point in it. Hey, yeah, exactly. <laughs> challenge Cup final or semi. Yeah, yeah. But video referees hope they don't get that. Bradford to the credit defending well here, but Halifax moving that ball out wide. Good tackle there. Real crash tackle came in well did our van. Bannister, Watini. Trying to get an offload. He does play on, but Bezik's got the ball. Can Halifax get one more try? They've really given a fright to the Super League rivals. Holroyd. Oh. Greenwood just couldn't take it. The pass just not in the right direction, just not the timing of the run. And a possible try scoring movement. Gone to ground. Yeah, gone. Out. One. Move. Hold, hold, go. Sam. Bradford sensibly Two. using the uh, the pack uh, here. Sam, what we have, wait. we hold. 46-28. Just drive it down at first receiver. Hargreaves and Sibbit doing good work. Hold. Back on the ball. Back and some the ball. bad work there at the play of the ball by uh, Halifax. Hold, fellas. Wait, wait, go. Is he? One. Andy Lynch. Move. Hold. Bradford just calming this game now, eking out these last uh, few minutes. Two. Move. Go. Brings. Oh, lost the ball. Well, a last chance for a score from uh, Halifax, but uh, Back up. Go. man of the match, uh, Jonathan? Well, I think Kopchak's had a big game. I think Lynch has come to the fore One. in the second half. Move. Even um, Heath Square. Lestrange has Hold. been uh, quite dominant. Oh. Halifax, you know, Pentovich has been good, but for me, the standout man, the Carnegie man of the match is Bradford Bush, number 12, 
Elliot Whitehead. You know, he's been influential, but also he's been playing out the position a second over the injuries to the backs. He's been playing the centre. So, Carnegie man of the match. Elliot Whitehead. Yeah, he's picked up a try, he's made tries, he's put yes. good runs in, hasn't he? Been a very unselfish uh, player. Oh! Well, was that just a straightforward knock on by uh, the youngster O'Brien or was Rotini interfering with him? Yep, I would agree that uh, he knocked on. Yeah, he did, but uh, Martini was. Here we go, lads. That pass was never going to get to him. No. Last chance then for Halifax to add a few more points, gain some more credit. Stephen Bannister. Move back up. Lee Patterson. Frank Watini wants a run. Pounding in there. Three. Move. Still three tacklers remaining. Pankovic. Good running from Pankovic. Good ball. But Bessie can he get it down? Yes. Oh, yes, I think he does. <laughs> Mr. Bentham was right on the spot, and that was good play. That was professional play from uh, Halifax. The drive down the middle, and then Bob Bezzi coming on the run. Not the biggest of forwards, but he timed his run well. And at one stage, he looked out of the game with that leg injury. Well, I think this is a lovely ball by Izu. It's a lovely run. Just watch. Pentovic goes again, OK? Good play from acting half-back. But this is the run, but that's a little pass, a little bit of high, but good hands, and Pentovic takes it and scores. So it's great support play, first of all, by Azu. Just watch him, and it's the give and take. The option of the pass, very, very good try. And I think the conversion... Good Successful try by uh, Danny Jones. Quick pitching it and kick from Danny Jones. And there is uh, the Hooter. No more time, uh, I'm afraid. The Bulls maintaining their dominance over Halifax in the uh, the Challenge Cup. 80 points uh, are told, but six tries to Halifax and a lot of praise in that. But what a scoreline. Yeah, they'll be happy to go through the Bradford Bulls, but uh, plenty of entertainment for the spectators. But, you know, plenty of tries, not enough defence, but an exciting game. 34 points to Halifax and 46 to the Bradford Bulls. Well, there's a few bloody noses out there, and I don't think Bradford will reflect on this match with an awful lot of satisfaction because they've won it, fine, they're through to the fifth round, but they know that they've had a match out there in Halifax. Had they made something of the two chances they had in two minutes, Brian Noble, they, they could have won that. I don't think they realised how close they were, but they, they did fall into a bit of a hole, didn't they, about ten minutes into that second half, and they just couldn't quite get to the right end of the field for the right reason. Uh, man of the match, Whitehead, justifiably so, stole the ball twice off Rob Warrensey in, in a small period of time, and that amount of defence Halifax had to do then just was too much for them. Well, Elliot Whitehead was the man of the match, as you mentioned. He had a try disallowed as well. Let's hear from him now. He's with Damien. Congratulations, Elliot, uh, the Carnegie man of the match. There's your champagne. Uh, it was uh, a real battle out there. Yeah, they made it tough for us today. We expected it, though. We didn't come here thinking we were going to win easy, so we expected a tough game. A lot of uh, mistakes as well this afternoon. Frustrating for you? Yeah, I think we started to try offload a bit too much and uh, we made it a bit hard for ourselves in the first half, but we'll fix up on that. People talk about a gap between the Super League and the Championship. It wasn't really apparently obvious today, particularly. No, like I said, the Halifax are a good team. They made it hard for us, so I'm lucky for them, but we've got to win, so I'm happy with that. It's been a difficult season, hasn't it, for Bradford? Will this help you get back on the bike and get things back on track? Um, I think we'll build some confidence from this match today, so hopefully we can take it in the next weekend. Full care. Congratulations, Elliot. Thanks very much. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Jamie Peacock also here in the studio with us. What did you make of Bradford today? 
I think they'll be pleased they're in the next round. I think that's the most they can take out of that at the moment. This uh, game was always going to be a potential banana skin, I think, for Bradford. And they're through to the next round. Uh, like Ray French said earlier, they, they've got a lot of young players out there and they'll benefit from the experience of playing in, which was a derby game for them. Well, let's hear from one of the youngest players out there. Adam O'Brien is with Damien. <laughs> Adam, congratulations, a great victory, but I, I guess your, your face tells the story. It was a real battering encounter. It was. Uh, we knew that was going to be a tough game. Halifax are a great side. They came with some great things, and we had to battle hard. The first 20 minutes were a great battle. We got a few points ahead, and uh, we slacked off a bit, and they got a few points back, and at the end of the game, it were a real good encounter, boys. What was it like for you, your first Challenge Cup game? Only your second first team game, I think. Yeah, it was a great experience for me. It's tough, you know, playing against a good side. Uh, I enjoyed myself, but no, it was a tough game. Is this going to be the turning point for Bradford because you've been struggling in Super League? We, we, we've been struggling, we haven't been getting the wins and things haven't been happening right, but we've been going well in training and stuff been happening in games days and we've got to fix that, but no, it could be a turning curve in the season for us. What are your thoughts about round five? A home tie, I guess, is what everyone always says. Well, home, time, uh, home side, it's a, a good game for us, it gives us an advantage, but depending what side it is, uh, no, it's going to be another good game being Challenge Cup, Rugby. Thanks, Adam. Andy Lynch, the uh, Bradford Bulls captain, is also with us. Hello, Andy. Um, I heard you in the tunnel saying, stick to the game plan. That's what was your message to your troops. Did they? Uh, I pray, uh, probably 50% of the game we, we did that and uh, we made it hard for ourselves. And credit to Halifax to come out and give us a, a good game, but we're, we're through to the next round. I think that's the main thing. A lot of errors. It kind of it tells the story of Bradford's season, doesn't it? I think it is. That's all, that's all we're doing, giving penalties and errors away, and they're getting our half and the. They capitalise on it and we've got to cut them out and it shows when we do that, it's a different game altogether. Was it a harder game than you expected against a championship outfit in Halifax? I know it's a local derby so it's pretty intense anyway. Yeah, we always knew it was going to be hard and I think you look at other games that have been played, Catalans and Lee, that, that were a close game. So you know, all games are going to be uh, close and uh, we're looking to come away with a win. You're in the hat, that, that feels pretty good I guess. That's the main thing, we're in there now and we're worried about whoever we get next when it comes but we've got to, back to go back to concentrate on Super League now. Thanks Andy. Cheers, thank you. Andy Lynch there, and before him, Adam O'Brien, who's only 17 years old. He's going to go and get his nose all cleaned up now. And have a look at the statistics from the match, and you'll see that Halifax, they did well. They really did, but 18 errors made, a lot of errors on both sides, to be honest, and a lot of penalties conceded. But a good atmosphere out there. Chris Spence told us via Twitter, and if you want to send us a message, just put hashtag BBC Rugby League on the end of it, and we'll find it. Um, Chris said, stood on the terracing, supporting Bradford. Honestly, get Halifax back in Super League great atmosphere it was a good atmosphere out there. and wasn't that pitch in brilliant condition yeah it was yeah it was um, a great game to watch you know last 20 minutes probably uh, Bradford knew they'd won Halifax and uh, knew they'd lost but it was a great game up until that point and, and the atmosphere was electric it was a derby it's going to be like that Rugby League at bbc.co.uk, by the way, is our email address. And the draw for the fifth round is coming up live. It's happening, oh, in just a few moments' time. So what about telling you who's going to be in that draw? Because the other matches are complete now, which were three o'clock kickoffs. Let's confirm all of the results for you. Now, Huddersfield, they were under a lot of pressure. Bear in mind, they are second in Super League. Batley are in the uh, Co-Optive Championship. And Batley led for most of the match, but Huddersfield came out on top, winning by 10 points in the end, 28 points to 18. Dewsbury, this is a bit of a shock here because um, Championship 1 leaders, Swinton Lions, beat their Championship rivals. Swinton then going through. Wakefield, they put 50 points on. Doncaster, Halifax, Bradford. Uh, Bradford, well, that's our match here. That's the one we've just been watching. 46-34, <laughs> Bradford won. And big wins in the rest of it for the sides that you would have expected to have been favourites. So Salford, Widnes, Castleford go through, Warrington go through, Wigan and also Hull KR. Um, in terms of Leeds Rhinos, Jamie, who would you fancy, or who don't you want in the next um, round? I don't think, as long as we're at home, I think that's the big thing in the Cup. If we can get at home in front of our fans at Edinburgh, we'll, we'll fancy our chances against anybody who's, who's in the next round. Um, let's have a look at the second half. Didn't really live up to the first half, did it, Brian? I mean, the whole match was a bit like a game of tennis because you were slightly looking one end to the other. But Halifax were first on the scoreboard. It didn't quite get close enough, but we thought it was going to be at the start here. And Halifax should do a whole lot more of this because that was a fabulous kick with people in position. He chased it really well and beating the fullback and the winger to the ball. And that's a terrific start to the second half. And he's put it on a sixpence as the uh, Ben Black it is with a kick. And it's a great pressure kick in between the fullback and in between the winger. And Sam Barlow says, well, I think that's mine. 
Yep, Sambala making up for his high tackle early in the first half. Mm -hmm. And that meant that the gap was only four points, but Bradford kept piling on the pressure and eventually they, they made it pay. Well, I think it was the next ten minutes when they had a heck of a lot of pressure at this end of the field with penalties and, and ball steals. And here's Sibbit, it hits a great hole, what we call a great hole and a great line in between two defenders who were confused. A little bit of nomination needed in the blue and whites, but uh, you have to say that Hargreaves, nice pass out the back to Herbert and Herbert. Sibbett's got a walking try because of the line that he ran and it was a, a great fish. And there on in, Halifax didn't touch the ball too much for the next 10 minutes and, and Bradford got enough of a lead to get away from them. I thought we were going to go for some sort of record, Jamie, because that was the 12th different try scorer there, Sibbett. And I was starting to think, hmm, how many different try scorers ever in a match, I wonder? I think a lot of people will be happy. Well, the all players are happy when they yeah. get the try, so there's going to be 12 happy players there uh, looking at that. Gareth Rayner was one of the few that had two on the on the board, and this is a lovely finish, this is. Yeah, it's a good finish, but you, you have to say that Black and, and Warrensy need to communicate a little bit and hand him over. He should just hand over the halfback because it's an old what we call a drop-off play. Somebody comes back on an inside ball, they haven't spoken to each other, and they both go for the same man in, in the bloke that's passed it. I think it was Herbert. And Gareth Rayner gets himself a free try and a free... And I think he has a decent celebration on the back of it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a few sore bodies out there. Jamie, you were saying that um, in your period when you were injured, the, the one thing you don't miss is how you feel right now and how these players will feel tomorrow. And that is Yeah, so it is. Yeah, you, you know you've been in... Um, rugby league's one of them spots. You, you know you've been playing the next day and I'm sure the, the Bradford players will feel that and the Halifax players. And uh, certainly a feeling that I won't miss when I f finish playing and I'm, I'm feeling it a little bit now, to be honest. Yeah, I bet you are. And I think making a point there as well about recovery is that 99% of the, of the Halifax team have a job to go to tomorrow. Yes. So they're going to be sat at work going, oh, e ah, and there's a full-timer who can obviously recover properly. And it hurts a lot more when you've lost. And, and despite the fact that they came back with a consolation try towards the end, and, and really you could see the frustration in their faces after this Bob Bezik scoring, they just knew if they could have done this earlier... I think that's the big thing there. That the frustration is from that. You've hit the nail on the head. That they knew they had the chance to go on and do it, and they just didn't do that in that 20-minute period in the second half. As Nobby said before, they had a glut possession, Bradford, and scored a few tries and took Halifax out of it. And just because of the fact they was in the game and then blew it, that leads to frustration. Absolutely. Chances were begging and they yep. missed them. And that's what happens. But the Super League side, Bradford, are the ones who are through to the fifth round. And the draw for the Carnegie Challenge Cup will now be complete, or will now be executed by Damien Johnson. Thanks very much, Claire. Uh, welcome to the draw for the fifth round of the Carnegie Challenge Cup. To make the draw, Adam Fogarty, former uh, Halifax player, now mixing it with the A-listers in Hollywood. And uh, Matthew Lewis, Neville Longbottom in the Harry Potter films. Adam... Yes, a popular boy. Uh, Adam, wasn't your side's day, your former side's day today? No, no. I think, you know, they put up a great display to say that, you know, they're not full-timers. So, I think they did great, you know. And Matthew, Lee's Rhinos fan. Yeah. Yeah, they won against Crusaders, so hopefully we'll uh, get a good draw for him today. OK, in time-honoured fashion, gentlemen, the draw. After you. You go home. Me. Adam with the home sides. Number seven. Number seven, Huddersfield Giants. Giants. Uh, local rivals to Halifax. At home two. Number two. Number two, Catalan Dragons. <laughs> Number 14. Number 14. Warrington Wolves, the holders. At home in round five, two. Number eight. Number eight, Swinton. Number five. Number five. Leeds Rhinos. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Champions. That's number ago. one. Harlequins. <laughs> home to Harlequins. Number six. Number six is St Helens. Just to dominate this competition. At home. Number three. To Featherstone Rovers. <laughs> Number nine. Number nine. Wakefield Trinity Wildcats. Number 13. At home to Castleford Tigers, a local derby there. Number 10. Number 10. The Bradford Bulls. And a home tie. Number 15. Against Wigan Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> the round, 
impressively so far. Number 12. Witness Vikings. Number four. At home to Hull FC. Interesting. Number 11. Number 11. Salford City Reds. Number 16. Hulkingston Rovers. So that's it. And that is all of them. Let's uh, conclude the uh, draw. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Let's have a look at uh, the completed draw. The fifth round of the Carnegie Challenge Cup. Huddersfield against Catalan. Warrington v Swinton. Leeds at home to Harlequins. St Helens against Featherstone. Wakefield v Castleford of West Yorkshire Derby. Bradford against Wigan, possibly the tie of the round. Witness versus Hull FC. And Salford against Hull KR. The ties to be played over the weekend of the 21st and 22nd of May. Here's Robbie Paul for some instant reaction from the Bradford dressing room. Yes, you're right. I'm in the victorious Bradford Bulls dressing room. I've got uh, one of my former teammates, uh, Ian Sibbett, with me. Ian, what do you think about that draw at home to the Wigan Warriors? Uh, well, we're glad to have a home tie, that, that, that's for sure. But um, I think we all Wigan won. They um, came down to our place earlier in the year and gave us a good hiding, to be honest. So if you want to win the cup, you've got to be the best teams in the country and they don't come much better than Wigan. Now, that game out there today, it, it looked pretty tough. You got a graze on your head, you got a black eye to, to match that graze. Were you a bit nervous before you scored your try? All these black eyes and grays that I get off the misses, nothing to do with rugby. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a tough game. We knew it was going to be. Halifax were up for it. Um, we expected a tough contest and we got one. We probably were our own worst enemy at times, but um, we got into the next round, that's the main thing. How did it feel getting over the try line yourself? Yeah, it's been a while. It was, uh, it was good. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Cheers, Ian. Thanks. Back to the studio. So, Bradford against Wigan, that's a great tie. Um, Jamie, what's your reaction to Leeds at home against Harlequins? I think we're glad we're at home. I said we wanted to be home the, um, before the draw was started. And we owe Quins as well. They beat us earlier in the year in, in the Super League. I think it was round three or four. They came to our place and won. So, it'd be, it'd be a chance for us to get a bit of revenge and get into the quarterfinals. And just picking up on a couple of the injuries that you had yesterday in particular... Um, Danny Maguire, when's he going to be back? I'm not sure. I, I, um, Magsy, I think he's um, done some things with his quad, whether he's um, torn it or, or just strained it, we don't know yet. He'll know more on Monday, but it's obviously gutting um, because he's been out for so long and then three weeks later he's out for a little bit longer as well. It's difficult for him at the moment. And Brent Webb was the other one, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's a dead leg, but um, a dead leg, can, you can be out for a while. I know, I think Rob Burrow had one um, last year, the year before, and was out for six weeks, so they'll have to look at that. It's in a bad place and you can get a lot of internal bleeding with it. A dead leg. And it looked like it had gone up very quick. I mean, a lot of ice. Yeah, in it, didn't he's it? got sparrow legs anyway, Webby, so <laughs> he'll probably be happy that they've got a bit bigger. I love your sort of team camera <laughs> and sympathy, natural sympathy for your fellow players. Uh, well, let's get a reaction from uh, Mick Potter, the winning coach today, uh, both about today's match and about the draw that they've got. Mick, your uh, first reactions to the home draw against Wigan? Uh, tough one, and, you know, it's, it's good we're in the next round, and uh, I'm glad it's at home. Right, how do you feel to the game today? Well, I think we, we could have done a lot better in some areas and you know, again it doesn't matter what happens in the in the game so long as you so long as you win the game and you get in the next round. So yeah, we're happy about that, but we've got some work to do. Now before coming into this game you had already picked up quite a few injuries. You picked it looks like you picked up a couple more today. How's that uh, make you feel? Oh, it's just another challenge. It probably gives some other people an opportunity and, and we might be getting a couple back in a week or two anyway. All right, cheers mate. Thank you. Thanks, Congratulations today. So let's just have another look at this draw because Brian Noble, as the, as the sides came out, I mean, there's a couple of really good ties in there. Wakeford, Castleford and Bradford Wigan probably been the pick of them, but Lee Tarlequins as well. But what we've got set up for here is some fantastic quarterfinals. It's as if it's, as if it's been seeded, but all the teams that are not expected to win there will put pulling the stops out to win because the majority of them are Super League teams or teams that are in form. But... You know, we could end up having probably the top eight teams in Super League in the quarterfinal of the Challenge Cup, but that's not taking anything away from the next round because I think there's some fabulous ties there as well. And actually, when you look at how much pressure Huddersfield were put under today by Batley, you, you know, Catalan are going to have a look at that result and think, oh, OK, all right, we'll take on Huddersfield, thank you very much. Yeah, they're, they're the form team of the Super League, Catalan, and mm -hmm. they've been scoring points for fun and they found their form with some super, super players. So Nathan Brown, the, the Huddersfield coach, will be thinking, whew... This might just be a tough one. Well, let's have another chat with uh, one of the try scorers from today. Tom Burgess is now with Robbie. Just think of all the blowjobs. 
I got with me one of the youngsters. It's becoming a youngsters team, it seems, here at Bradford. Uh, Tom Burgess, yeah. how do you feel after your, especially getting over there, it'll be your first ever Challenge Cup try? How do you feel? Yeah, it was mad. First try of the season as well. I suppose it doesn't count, though. I've still got to do the naked run if I don't score later on in the season. But, but now it's good to get over the line. Now, your brother Sam down in Australia, he is injured at the moment. Have you been in touch with him lately? How's his injury going? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's got a pot on for eight weeks. I think he's going to come home after that for a, a few uh, few weeks. I think three weeks he's going to have over here. Then he'll then be going back to rehab, back in Australia. So how are you enjoying your time in the first team at the moment? Yeah, it's going great. You train with the, with the boys all year like in the pre-season and it's just good to uh, get playing on the field with them and get amongst it. All right, cheers, Tom. Cheers. Congratulations for the win. Cheers, mate. Amazing family, the Burgess family. So much talent. Um, so the ties for the Challenge Cup fifth round, they take place in two weeks' time on Saturday the 21st of May and the 22nd of May on the Sunday. Looks like we're probably going to be at Wakefield for their match against Castleford and at Bradford for the match against Wigan, but we'll wait and obviously confirm that fully on the website a little later on. Uh, next weekend, the Great Manchester Run, the Great North Swim, uh, which is at Salford Keys, and the City Games, all of that on BBC Two from 10 o'clock in the morning. That um, City Games, that happens in Dean's Gate in Manchester and Street Athletics. Tyson Gay is going to be there, Jess Ennis, Christina Hurugu. Amazing, amazing day in Manchester. And quite a lot of excitement in Manchester today, actually. Um, I won't give anything away, but match of the day two starts at 10 o'clock on BBC Two. Obviously, the big highlight will be Manchester United against Chelsea. That's live right now on Five Live, and you'll see highlights tonight on the telly. So, um, Jamie, very unfair to ask you who you'd make favourites right now to win the Challenge Cup, but I'll ask you anyway. <laughs> this is a difficult question, yeah. Um, obviously, the top three or four in Super League are going to be there, aren't they? And I think uh, Warrington, as the holders as well, they'd, they'd, um, you put a lot of emphasis on it when you've won the trophy before. So. And actually, there has, I mean, there's been a lot of talk, and we, and we mentioned it again yesterday, that, that for a side as good as your Leeds Rhinos side is, not to have won it with this current crop of players... You know, you haven't won it since 1999. Yep. I know you don't need me to remind you of that. <laughs> yeah, I think we've probably got some unfinished business in the Cup rally. We got to the final last year and was um, soundly beaten by Warrington. And for ourselves as a team, it's about going one step further and um, getting to the final and winning. But we, obviously, we've got to deal with Quinns first, but try and beat Harley Quinns. And actually, I suppose also try not to almost want it too much. I mean, there's that careful balance. And I guess, Brian, that's where the coach comes in to control the players' expectations and their emotional reaction to it. You have to, to pay it. attention to that. You know, you have to look at the upcoming games before the next round. And I think when we're looking at favourites for the Cup, you have to say who's in form now because the next round's in two weeks. Yeah. So you've got to maintain that form and who's playing well now because you can actually fluke a draw, if that's the right expression, and then come into form over a period of weeks. But however... Now, in two weeks' time, you've got to be playing well. They're the favourites, the ones that are playing well now. Yeah, and, and I'll ask you the same question I asked Jamie. Who do you make favourites at the moment? Well, Wigan are in form, Catalan are in form. Uh, Huddersfield have been a bit blippy, you know, that, but they turned turning up for big games. Warrington have got a great tie, so you'd, you'd think that they will get through that. Uh, Leeds have come into form in the last few, few weeks, albeit they're probably not where they want to be because they've been disruptive through injuries. Um, and, and Hull, you have to say that Hull's form over the last month, so the form teams at the moment seem to be those teams. And having watched the two matches that you've watched with us this weekend, what, what are the sort of visual images that stand out for you? I can't get away from Heb Cahill. I just, it was like the Havit advert, wasn't it? Havit, when he tried to kick the ball. And I don't think it was malicious. I don't think it was, it was reckless for sure, but was it a send-off because it changed the game? You know, I thought it was a tough, great game yesterday. And, and actually, the, also involving Rob, Robbie Barrow, I think my visual image was him suddenly accelerating to score his... Yeah, goal. Rob was fantastic. I, I think the thing for me that's come out this weekend, looking over the results, is there's life outside Super League, isn't there? Yeah, Look how definitely. close um, everybody's been running Super League and um, you know, there's only been 10, 12 points in a few games, so it looks like the game's in good shape for me. That's what come it out. does, and, and I think the other thing we've learnt this weekend is that you don't have to just be a coach to be involved in rugby league, the new consultancy role that, that <laughs> Brian is going to be taking on, great, and also the new good. movie star role, obviously, when he's <laughs> depicted in the film of Gareth Thomas's life. I had some great text last night saying I was a bit unfair on myself, likening myself to Danny DeVito. It's more like Brad Pitt or... Oh, really? Or somebody, yeah. Are you Maybe Daniel Craig or... Right? Yeah. Not Johnny Depp, yeah. Am I not Johnny Depp, indeed? But uh, I'll probably get back to Shrek in the end. No, you won't. We love you, Brian. <laughs>
Anyway, good luck in that Thank role. You. And also just lovely to have you, you know, Halifax will be very pleased, I just think, and honoured to have the benefit of your wisdom, as indeed we are on the BBC, because we get to ask him all of this stuff as well. Jamie, thank you so much, particularly when you're feeling tired and battered for coming in and, and adding your thoughts to today's show. We really appreciated it. And isn't it just lovely having Rugby League back on the BBC? We, you've seen coverage this weekend of the fourth round of the Challenge Cup, and we will be back for the fifth round as well. Bradford will be there, Leeds Rhinos will be there, and the rest. We'll see you in two weeks' time. Bye bye. These haters couldn't get to where I am with a full tank of petrol.